Hi everyone. Welcome to my season two, episode nine of Fabrically Speaking Live. Today I'm going to teach you how to use my OctiHoops for free motion embroidery. And inside of the school, there will be this butterfly pattern so that you can, after the show, go ahead and print it out on your computer and you can embroider along with me. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Elaine LeBlanc from Colorado. And Lorenda, welcome back. Cynthia, welcome back. Pet Higgins, well, I can tell you guys that yesterday I went live for almost six hours. So we are, I'm amazed that I'm at this point, but actually the day went really fast. I'm full of energy despite it all. I hope you enjoyed the almost endless video yesterday. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate knowing that you appreciate my work. I have two cameras that are not online right now. So I'm going to try to do that uh, without making it too dramatic here. And if you aren't familiar with the OctiHoops free motion frames, they allow you to do free motion quilting and embroidery. And they work on all sewing machines. As you, if you caught the beginning of the video, you kind of got the idea. You don't need a presser foot to do this. You can see below the fish how there is no foot on the machine. So you do not need a presser foot in order to do this. You can use one if you like, and a lot of people do when they first use them, like to try them out in with the foot because it feels more familiar to you. So I don't really mind whichever feels better for you. For some reason, one of my cameras doesn't want to come on. Inside of the kit, you receive three stabilizers to try out on the actual project. And the patterns are actually the, the actual, what can I say? The actual paperwork that's included because this is not an embroidery machine. This is actually going to be used on your regular sewing machine. There was an echo, I hope I fixed it. Oh, I gotta add you to this one. Okay, there shouldn't be an echo. <laughs> there was. me to not have this particular camera going. So this video will be a reminder for me not to go six hours the day before my show. Have any of you got the OctiHoops and already are using them? If you are, it'd be great for you to share that with people that aren't familiar with them yet. Why aren't you coming on? Come on. Let's see. Just pretend this is commercial break. If you've ever done free motion embroidery without our octi hoops, 
you know that it can be really challenging. I'm almost there, you guys. Yay. We really have our cameras. It's kind of like the computer is really, really tired today because it is not good at doing what I expected to do right now. Oh, it's my brain. That's what it is. This is an embroidery I did with by just um, taking a picture off the internet and then put it out and then embroidered it. So I think we got everything going, and it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk away and get my headphone because I can hear it in my cell phone, which means you probably can hear it in the mic repeating after I repeat. And since we already had a report, I hope you're gonna have you look at. Let's see, this is what it takes to do free motion, and I'll be right back. Back, but I gotta get my headphone to hear me. So, how many of you don't think that you can do free motion? Go ahead and raise your hand if you do. And if you don't know what raising your hand is, you can do anything that they allow you to do inside of the chat. To be able to hear music first on this headphone. So I get to hear a little bit for a second. And it should pick up my voice. And then I'm the only one who hears me repeating after every word I say. The snickety. I will get better at this. I hope like I'm getting a little better every week. Sometimes we have mechanical issues like yesterday, the cameras kept turning off. And I think it may have just been because they were on too long because we ran so long. One second and I'll be done. Now I can hear myself in my ear. And I am officially set up. And actually, I just got carried away with getting the pattern ready for you guys. I probably waited till after and just let you know that I have. <laughs> Three cameras are on. So I'm going to go to this, and hopefully, we will officially be underway. Whenever you add a camera, kind of. Whenever you add. 
wants to bring them all on screen, even though I don't have that selected. Stream, StreamYard will improve as they have been improving tremendously. Okay, here we go. so hello everyone. Welcome to season two, episode nine, uh, Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley. If you're not familiar with who I am, I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products and the Octi Hoops, which is what I'm gonna show you today. And then eventually on YouTube, the, the original beginning will not be there. Microphone a little staticky. Hi, Facebook user from Newport News. Come on, Mike. I'm gonna unplug it really quick. Hello, hello. There we go. No more interference. Okay. Hi from Newport News. So see how your picture doesn't show up and I can't see your name? And that's because inside of Facebook, you need to give StreamYard permission to see your profile so that when you're in the live feed, I can see who you are. And you can do that inside of my group at the top. There are three dots on the top left hand or right hand side when you're looking at the screen and we click on that there is a a link to manage the group apps and when you go in there then you'll see StreamYard, and then you just allow it and then your picture whatever you have set up on facebook will be showing up you can actually embroider on drapery fabric you did it. Did you use it, our, our Octi Hoops for it? I would love to see. I hope you join my school so that you can share it with everyone. Hi, Denise, Karen, Cindy, Tina. All right, let's get going here. So you get three hoops in the frame, in the kit, free hoops or frames. And inside of the kit, you'll also have some stabilizers. And if you're not familiar with what a stabilizer is, it's actually a type of material or fabric that we use to actually stabilize the fabric. And when we say that, what is it that we're really trying to stabilize? I have to get something charging here because my headphones aren't gonna last. So that should charge it and then they will. So what is it that we talk about when we say stabilize the fabric? We're actually talking about, you're good, Bob, you're, you're showing up on StreamYard. I can see it's you. So when you guys are on Facebook, I'm actually not on Facebook right now. In fact, if I were, my cameras would fail. So while you're chatting in Facebook, they're sending your chat into StreamYard, into the actual stream. It's like you're, I'm in a river and then there's a bunch of people in my boat and the people that are in my boat, you can see their names and pictures. So if you can't see your name and picture, you haven't gotten into the boat yet and you need to do that by giving StreamYard permission. And I believe you'll see it. Because I, whenever I go live, I ask it to give in instructions inside of Facebook. So Bob, you're good to go though. You've already done it at some point. So when we have material, any kind of fabric, this is a t-shirt, so it's gonna have even more give or stretch. So when you stretch it, if you try to embroider on it without something to stop it from stretching, then the shirt will, expand in some areas and shrink in others and you'll end up with a very messy looking shirt and it's devastating if you're not aware of that before you go to embroider <laughs> oh 
What am I doing? Wrong computer. <laughs> All right. Maybe I am not recovered from yesterday. So this embroidery that I did right here, you see there's no puckering. And this is the first embroidery that I did using the Octi Hoops on a t-shirt. So the Octi Hoops are like 13 years old now. This shirt is 13 years old. It's been washed a lot because I took it to shows and pass it around. People would handle it. So I'd bring it back and wash it. And you can see that the shirt is starting to show age and wear, but the embroidery still looks like the day I did it. And that is one, because I used 100% polyester thread because rayon and cotton both will decay, fade, shrink, bleed, rot over time because they're natural fibers. So polyester is a better thread to use. And then beneath this embroidery is a product that we sell called Cover Up. And it comes in different colors. I'll be, I'll probably show you a little bit and not just do the butterfly and show you how you can use this. But I also use the cover up to embroider on a towel. You can see how full the stitches. And this is another product or project that's really, really old. And the embroidery still looks beautiful. On the back side, you'll see our stick and tear is still present. And that's partly because I teach with this. Now, if I peel this back, it would rip the shirt, or it's not a shirt, rip any type of material, pull these loops out. And the reason that would happen is because our adhesive that is on the back of our stick and tear is so strong that it bonds to the towel and it'll just pull those loopies right, right out. So when we do embroidery, we're gonna use another stabilizer on the back side to prevent that from happening. And that S is just a font that I found in my computer font list. And you can go to Google fonts and you'll find a bunch of free fonts there. Unbelievable selection. Now this towel, I did everything the right way. If I remember correctly, this was also, also a, a live video where I taught how to monogram on towels. You'll find that in my, list of live videos that's my live video playlist or the octi hoops playlist and on the back side you're going to see that i can pull this up real easy and it doesn't pull the loops up and on the back of that it's shiny that is our hold light and the hold light is uh is the stabilizer with a hummingbird on the label and what i mean by that is all of our stabilizers have an animal character representing it. The cover-up has a panda bear. And the stick and tear has a green tree frog. And this is what we use to get the towel or shirt or whatever fabric you're going to embroider on held into the hoop. And just like tree frogs have sticky feet, That's why we represented it with a tree frog because they can scale a wall and their feet are sticky, but they can then pull their foot off. So you can apply your fabric and then remove your fabric. I didn't select a material or a particular fabric to embroider on today. I thought I'd let you guys choose. What kind of material would you like me to embroider on? Would you like me to embroider on denim, minky, or regular cotton. Try to think of all the things I have closest to me that I can select. This is something that I taught. And this pattern will be available inside of the school. This is a towel. She was the first one. I have towels. I could put a butterfly on a towel. Nobody says I can't. Minky, oh, we got two, two challenges today. And they'll both be handled the same way. The hardest part is getting the design transferred on those. If I used cotton, I could see through 
the light of the cutter pillar light tablet. So doesn't mean I can't do it. Just have to find my cover or my hold light. Let's see here. It's going to give you something to look at instead. Yesterday, when I went live, I used a hoop. Where is it? I'll put it in the bottom drawer. I have drawers here to try to make things more organized. So I'll let you look at this while I grab. Whichever's closest to me, if it's a towel, is a towel. If it's not a towel, then it's whatever, whatever it is. Fiona said something about ouching. Did you actually, oh, you just kicked your toe. Owie, I've done that before. Haven't we all done that? <laughs> and you'd think by the time we reach our age, we would no longer bite our cheek or get the hiccups or stub our toes on furniture. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and let you look at this while I grab whatever I'm gonna embroider on. I'm leaning toward a towel. So let's see, it's close. Yep, there's one right here, it's white. Really easy to see. I could do a t-shirt. I got a t-shirt too. Or just solid material. You know what? If I teach you with the t-shirt, you'll learn better. And I'll use the same process. But if I do a t-shirt, you get to see a couple other things I haven't shown on any of my live videos. And then I can show you how to transfer your design onto the shirt. It's a good full-size t-shirt. So how do we handle all that fabric when we embroider? I usually just have a piece of fabric on a hoop when I demonstrate to you. And that's also really cool because you can embroider just on a little, so if you wanted to make your own quilt uh, labels, you could write on a piece of fabric that big and embroider whatever logo you have right on it, even though you don't have an embroidery machine. And if you do have an embroidery machine, this may seem tedious to you, but it's fun. And you can also make your free motion embroidery designs unique by adding elements. So you can embroider like a frog that they have on there. And then you could make water and add reeds and sunshine coming down because you're free to do whatever you want when you're using free motion. It's a big shirt. Which butterfly should I do? I know it's gonna have like a unique pattern for you today, but well, I ran out of time. This is a stick and rinse stabilizer sticker. And this is how we would normally do it. It's a water soluble adhesive back tear away stabilizer that you can print on with your inkjet printer, just as I printed on paper. And then this sticks to the shirt and it also prevents the shirt from stretching. So you'd have resistance from stretching on the bottom and resistance from stretching on the top. And it locks your stretchy minky, or loopy terry cloth towels in place so they cannot escape all that stabilization. So I'm gonna put some hold light on the back of the t-shirt and also trace the design using the Caterpillar light tablet because if, if, you're, if you're not in, in possession of our stick and rinse, which is the fastest way to transfer a design onto your fabric, you'll probably want to do what I'm going to show you, which is to draw on your fabric using, you can use markers, by the way, you can actually use Sharpie markers and color the color you're going to embroider on the shirt on the shirt would be hard on a towel or a Mickey. So you can also print on our hold light, which I had shown recently when I embroidered on Minky, by the way. So if you want to watch me embroider on Minky, I did so on Tinkerbell's, 
And Tinkerbell is my dog who will probably show up at some point and beg me to pick her up. But I made a minky sweatshirt for her one week. And then the next week I did a free motion fabricly speaking live. And I think it was season one, episode four. I really can't be sure. But if you go into the fabricly speaking playlist and look for another free motion lesson, you'll find I monogrammed her name on Minky. And I actually have it within my line of sight. So I may be able to show that to you in a minute. Okay, hold light, show yourself. I didn't really clean up from yesterday. I kind of just slid everything off. And if you saw me at the end of my live show yesterday, which was me bringing my trade show to you, then you saw my table messier than it's ever been on any video. Unless you've caught a video of me at a show before, because it was very stereotypical of me at a show. Another way to speed up your embroidery is to use pre-wound bobbins and you can match your color of thread. I just ruined a needle. It's okay. I want to change to the super universal needle, which I'm going to show you today. But these are the pre-wound bobbins. And you can also use what I always typically used, which is our lingerie thread in the needle and or in the bobbin. Give me that to look at while I try to find my whole light. Try not to buy or buy. <laughs> Go into my inventory and steal from my customers. But I may have to just so you don't have to wait. So I don't like making you wait. You can also start out by purchasing fabrics that are already printed and just color right over that. That's a really fun way to start. I can't believe how I did not. Oh, guess what I found? What I couldn't find yesterday. This will be a course inside of my school. How to embroider that eagle. Coming up. This is one of the original samples where you print on a sticker and then you color over it. And that's how I created this lacy appearance on this blouse. It was a ready-made garment. I got it at Goodwill. So I think it costs like $3. And if you want to do something for a gentleman, and if you or if you are a gentleman, this was a men's shirt and it had the cross just like that. And I thought it's kind of, it's cool, but I think it could be more classy if we embroidered. So I embroidered in between and that stepped it up quite a bit, don't you think? So you can do these things. And this also reminds me about a whiteout shirt that my friends had for a soccer team. So a whiteout shirt, I didn't even know they what they were <laughs> till they showed up with them. And they're just white shirts with the logo. And I embroidered all over the logo. And then they were the only fans with a whiteout shirt that was embroidered at the next game. I also embroidered on this wedding veil. Come on, you might be thinking about embroidering over a mask, but know that if you do, you're actually making holes in the mask. So you should embroider first before applying our stick and tear to the back. And this is another use for our stick and tear, the one with the frog, so that you can make masks that are three layer instead of wearing three masks. And this is an, a hat I embroidered on. This is one of the patterns you receive for free with the OctiHoops. And believe it or not, you can actually do that. You can embroider on a hat on your regular sewing machine. Another thing you can do is look at coloring book designs. 
you can either buy a coloring book or you can print out a coloring book and then trace over it or when our stick and rinse is back in stock you'd be able to print right on the stick and rinse and color right through it i got lots of drawers oh, good. I found some. it doesn't have the label on it but it is the whole light and whole light is ironed onto the fabric and this is what it looks like it has a shiny side and a matte side and when you iron it, the, the shiny side is what you want facing up and you're going to iron on even if it seems illogical to you. It may not seem illogical to you at all, but to me, it really bugs me for some reason. Okay. And the next thing is we have to select our thread colors which I didn't get a chance to do. And I will put the list of colors inside of the pattern, inside of the school, so that you know which ones I used after today is over. I'm gonna go ahead and get my iron up here. So the eagle is trashed <laughs> from, being handled by thousands of people all over every time I would go to shows. And I was gonna finish it, but I never did. And you can see how it is the size or the thread stitching is the size of the largest of the three frames. I did not stop embroidering because you can only embroider what the size that's in there. You can actually put a new layer of our stick and tear on the back, and then you would simply move it up and embroider the continuation of that pattern. So I don't know if you were describing draperies as a really big pattern that you embroidered, but you can, you can just create a really big wall art. It'd be harder and harder to handle the larger it got, but definitely capable. Absolutely. So here's how I get my table messy. This is a pattern or a fabric from Lorelei's Designs. And I just think they're adorable. And as I mentioned yesterday, you could embroider the cat and then cut it out and patch it onto something else. So it's, uh, it's like a fair way of using her design rather than just printing it on paper and coloring it. You can actually buy her fabric, use it as a pattern, and then you're not uh, violating copyright. Because we always want to be fair. We want to keep our artists in business so they keep designing things for us to use. This is the Deco Bob Bobbins, and this is the master set that we offer at creativefeet.com under the threads link. And I'm going to take the butterfly now show you how to handle this when you're when you don't have the stick and rinse. And there will be many, many, many more videos to come because we go live every Thursday at two o'clock. I got lots of air time to fill in. And I will be doing a towel embroidery project, but it will be an edited one where I don't run on too long to get to the point. So know that I'm not avoiding embroidering on the towel. This is the Cutter Pillar Ultra, and it lights up. And when it lights up, it allows me to take anything I want to trace something on and place it over it. This would be a good time to actually press the shirt in half so you know the center by just taking and this is a v-neck, which makes it a lot easier. You match up your shoulders so that you know that you're actually straight when you fold it. And then you find your v-neck and you can fold again at the bottom and match your side seams at the bottom. And then you would press the shirt so that you know center 
going all the way down the actual shirt. Tinkerbell has arrived. I know some of you got so frustrated with how messy my table was yesterday. It's funny. I was equally frustrated, but you know what? I was inspired when I woke up to go live, and I did. I'm going to bring up my ironing tablet. I can find it. So sorry, my chair is so noisy. You have to do something about it. Unless it's not bothering you. Nice to see you all getting to know one another. We don't want to iron directly on our cutter pillar. And if you're not familiar with what it is, it is this light tablet that's lit underneath. I don't need it at this moment, so you can see better without it on the camera. Come on, turn off. There we go. And I'm going to need the iron for the hold light as well. And on the hold light, we only use the silk setting, nothing hotter than the silk setting, which makes this really good for embroidering on minky. Because the hold light is for stabilizing or locking the stretch in the minky without burning the minky. And I definitely don't want to move the iron, you lift the iron on a t-shirt because the t-shirt's going to stretch. And this will help me to position. It's still not warm because it's on silk. I'm just going to take it up and then I'll have to cool it down for the hold light so I don't overheat the hold light, which is designed. And partly why we used a hummingbird to describe in imagery the whole light is because it is our thinnest and the coolest setting stabilizer we have. And I'm lifting and hopping the iron. This is called pressing. Ironing would be sliding the iron across the material, which gets tempting. Okay, so that is definitely pressed. Now say I want to identify how far down I wouldn't want the embroidery to be down to the belly button. So to keep myself from getting, positioning the drawing too far, and I'll fold it up and give myself a limit about how low I would go based on my body or the human form. Unless you want something down at your belly button and you can push steam. Do you have any water in here? And now we have a perfect guide for the center front. And I'm going to cool the iron down, back down to silk. Okay, it's on the silk setting. And now would be a time to have realized you should have done the whole bite first because ironing, you may iron that crease right out. So just in case, you could write on it with a pin, but this pin irons off. So definitely put the whole light on first. Do as I do. Do it. No, do as I say, not as I do. We'll see how it goes. So it's a folded stabilizer, and it comes 27 inches wide because you can also trace patterns, like garment patterns, with this. So we wanted to keep it wide. And we can't ship rolls this wide internationally. So we stuck with folding it. And what we're going to embroider is only about that big. We do want the stabilizer to extend at least an inch beyond. And you can also print on this and use it as the top image. As I showed in the last free motion video that I did, when I embroidered on the minky. So I'm going to kind of, I think I'm going to do that period because we do need something on top and this will lock on top and bottom the shirt. And remember when you're tracing, 
that the iron is going to hit the shiny side. So you want to have shiny side up when you trace your design. So one half of this I'm going to use to print or draw on. Let's see. I really want to do this butterfly. It's more thread changes. It's probably going to take longer. You guys choose. Which butterfly? One, two, or three? I had to mute myself for a minute because I coughed because I've been talking nonstop. One, two, or three. Come on, come on. That's not hard to type. I'm going to I'm going to make it easier. 2 or 3. It's just two colors. It'd be more fun for you to see me blend. One, huh? That would be really quick cuz it's so little. 3. Sarah's like me. Do the biggest. I think you'll be able to see this the third one better and it really is what I want to do anyway. So I don't need it to be really huge. So, but we do want it to extend beyond the butterfly about an inch on top and bottom. If any of you have entered the chat and I didn't say hi, hi everyone. I've been using my eyes so I can't I can't see the screen and do what I'm doing at the same time. I will do my best to see what you guys are saying and don't hesitate to ask twice if a period of time passes and I have not answered you because I love you. I don't want you to feel neglected. all over the floor from yesterday. Hey. Okay. So I would tape this so that it doesn't move and I will tape it. I have some of the washi tape in here. Be probably easier to use a scotch tape kind of tape. And if I do, I always use tape that doesn't stick or doesn't leave residue. And we never want to sew through regular tape, by the way. It will get on your needle. Just want to keep it from shifting. Shiny side to the iron. If this were a monogram, it would really matter. If it was an R and I traced the R with the matte side facing up and then I embroidered on the garment and I embroidered, I'd be embroidering a backwards R. You're fine, Sarah. You're showing up. Your name is showing up and your picture is showing up. You haven't done anything wrong. You're, you're doing everything great. Let's see if I can figure out what you think you may be doing wrong. Oh, you can't see everyone's chat. All right. So what are you watching on a computer or a device at the top of my video? Cause you're in YouTube. Oh, that was way more than I need. There is watch or there's a live chat button and you click on it and you can view the live chat. So honestly, I think anyone that's artistic should have like all of the markers of Sharpie and you could just draw that right over the top. So it's kind of doing two things. You get to color and it trains you actually for the movement that we're going to do with the octa hoops. Cause when we embroider with them, actually hold on to something that's like a crayon or marker and we hold our hand down and draw. Can anybody help her by describing what it looks like to get the, I think there's a word that says hide live chat and then if it's not on you would say see live chat or show or show live chat isn't this fun 
That's all you get to watch me color. I can't share my screen right now because I don't have two monitors and sometimes I can break the feed. So there's my yellow. And you know what? I think I'm going to put yellow here too, just because I can. I'm going to even put a little yellow right here and right here. So the whole butterfly has more color. I don't know if you'll be able to see as well with the light on on the camera. It kind of makes the camera squint. It definitely makes it easier for me, but I want you to be able to see. Can you guys see that okay? So we have black. Yeah. Boy, I got quiet, didn't I? I'm not going to fill in all the black because I don't need to whatever areas absent of color will be my black. And if I say it out loud, I'll remember. <laughs> yeah, you guys can see better with it off. So I'll just go off. I'll turn it on if I have to, which I may. And meanwhile, that iron is cooling all the way down. So I know it will be on synthetic when I go to iron it. It's a good time to ask me questions because this is going to take me as long as it takes me to draw. And this is going to be the pattern and it's also going to keep the t-shirt from stretching while I embroider on it. Got quiet because I had to think. Now on this line here, we can actually draw on it and it's such a small area when we stitch that with a straight stitch. It'll tear off and this will tear away really clean. All of the other parts of the stabilizer, all of this will actually stay in the embroidery. It'll be forever in there. I believe the hide the chat and show the chats on the top right hand side. These young people that run things like Amazon and YouTube and Facebook, they like to hide things. So slide your mouse around. It may show up if you slide your mouse around. So do you guys like to color and sometimes feel like it's wasting time because you don't really make anything with it, but you get that therapeutic kind of relaxed feeling. This is what you get from using the Octaves for embroidery. You get that therapeutic feeling. Now I like this butterfly, but I think that I would like to see more blue than what is showing here because this is probably, because it was a photograph of a butterfly, it was probably the way the light hit it. And the blue probably did go through there, but some of it was probably darker blue and then lighter blue. Sorry about turning that on again. So I'm going to kind of guess. And, and on the actual pattern that I give you guys, I will alter it so that you can match me. And then I'll do black dots instead of that being all black and a little bit of blue. It'll be mostly blue and a little bit of black. Hi, Carol. Welcome everybody. Are you guys having fun today? I'm going to put a little black circle in each one of those. And then this is going to be mostly black. And then I'm going to put a bigger blue. And that's simply also because it's easier. When you do free motion embroidery, you need to make it easy. Not too difficult so that we can't actually accomplish it. Especially on your first one. I want to move this so it's centered it's way off to the side. There we go. This camera could be repositioned. The light's reflecting on it. Sorry about that. Which light is it? It's not that one. Who knows? All right, here we go. So a big blue dot. And then this one come down. 
So if you have grandchildren and they draw you art and you really like it, you can actually take their drawing, trace their drawing, and embroider their own art onto a towel and give them their art on a towel. Isn't that cool? If you guys like that idea, hit a heart for me. I do want a border. And you do need the lines where it will be black because it kind of reminds you to stop with the blue color and leave. If you cover up your black line, you won't know where to put your black line. There we go. This is kind of good. I'm not really working today. I'm kind of goofing off. I'm goofing off with you guys. Why are you guys so quiet? Are you holding your breath as I draw the line? We're going to be using my Octi Hoops to color. And when you trace a lot of butterflies, you'll realize they don't have identical wings on both sides. Frequently they have different numbers of lines. It's, it's quite interesting. And I wonder if it's just that the light is hitting that in that way. So now I can take my blue. This isn't taking very long, is it? And if you're going to shade, we want to dot, want to, want to dot, want to leave the color that next, that's next to it there. So you can color with the other color marker if you have all of them. Now, the reason I like to use Sharpie is because I've tested it and it will not bleed onto your material. Once it is set on whatever it, it dries onto or sets onto, it stays on. So it won't move onto your white shirt. It will stay on the hold light, which is the stabilizer I'm drawing on. The shiny side to the iron, you draw on the shiny side. And I could even do yellow there. I think I should, don't you? I do. I think because, you know, it'd be more fun to have more yellow. If I can find my yellow marker, put things away as I go. Was it marker? Oh, maybe it was orange. I couldn't find it because I was looking for yellow. It kind of makes me think I could go yellow in here or just use fewer colors, be done with this embroidery quicker. Are any of you sewing while I am doing this? Any of you got your machines out? Problem with drawing the black first is your, the tip of my orange is now a little dirty. So you can always write on paper after you draw with it to get that black ink off. So to save your markers, do all the light colors first and finish the black after. Which may be the exact opposite of what you instinctually want to do because if you're like me, when we colored in the coloring book, the black line was already there and we would try to stay in the lines and maybe even outline along the line and then fill in. And that will probably be the same thing you'll experience when doing this. Your instincts will be to do what you learned already. Almost forgot that one over there. So for me to make a pattern like this, as I draw it, I'm going to have to take a picture. No, I'm not because my camera. Yeah, I'm going to have to take a picture. It's too reflective so that I can duplicate this. Okay, more blue. We're almost done. We're almost ready to put it on a shirt and start embroidering. You can also go out and buy any coloring book and make a quilt from, an from a coloring book. Do I have like a green? I think a green would be pretty there. I have actually a neon, a neon yellow highlighter. 
looks like it's in bad shape. There we go. So we have a different color just to remind me to stop and switch. I may use an orange in here or, or a light green because green and blue are complementary colors. Can, I don't know if you can see that. It's pretty bright. I think I'm going to do that in here too. Whatever I do down there will be in here. Rather than having to change your bobbin for every color, you can do white thread for all your light colors, a gray for all the mid, mid tones, and a black for all your dark colors. You can get away with it for the most part, but you won't be able to get away with not using a black bobbin with black or a white bobbin with white. And we can make these dots bigger because we can, because we are, we are the God of our art and nobody knows what we want. Hi, Cynthia. And let's see. Somebody was gardening yesterday while watching. I thought that was interesting. I'm actually going to just kind of make that bigger because it'll be easier and more fun to see more color. So this is kind of like an orange and I just made it dirty. So you can go like this and wipe it off and you'll see the black kind of comes off of it. And then you can get it back to normal. You have a window of opportunity to do that, by the way. If you don't do it quickly, then you can kind of mess it up. So now my tip is clean, but I know what I'm doing there. And I'm going to put that color in the eyeballs. So that's ready to actually be put on the shirt. And the iron is no doubt cooled down so that I can set it to synthetic and know that I'm not overheating the stabilizer and hopefully I have the stabilizer that I cut for the back handy. Those are the kind of things I do mindlessly and forget. This is the hoop that I decided to use. I could use a smaller one though. Might even be easier. When you get to the corners here, the shirt might have a hard time staying flat. So I'm gonna stick with my original assumption and go with a medium hoop. And we have three in case you're just stepping into the video. And you can use all of them for embroidery. And you can also do embroideries where you use all and that will be a course. I'm not even going to tell you about it because you're going to go, oh, please show us. Okay, before we pressed this to find our center of the shirt and to give us a closer bottom of the shirt so that we know that we can position the butterfly straight. But before I do that, I'm going to iron a plain piece on the back side, which apparently I put somewhere. I'll just cut another piece. Comes big. I usually find all the things I can't find like five minutes after the video ends and I go there. What was I thinking when I put it there? It's always best to have this bigger, but not so big that you're going to waste stick and tear. Because once the stick and tear and this are stuck to each other, they do not come apart. And this is actually used by professional embroiderers as well, by the way. We supply a lot of professional embroidery companies. And many of them use our cover-up. Because they can use less thread, digitize less stitches. That reduces the labor and it reduces the thread cost. And the embroidery always looks good no matter how many times it's been washed. I 
And since the shirt is bright white and the butterfly is black, but because we colored the actual butterfly, and if you were to color it all in black, that would even be better because the black ink will stay behind the thread. Sorry, I'm just trying to think it through on the, on the go. I would have been ready had I not gone six hours live yesterday. Were any of you with me last yesterday? I'm sure a lot of people needed a nap after watching me. So having that guideline, the guidelines helped a lot. There we go. Shiny side to the iron. And now I'm going to turn it on synthetic. Funny, let's see if it's still warm. It is still warm, even though it's off. I'm going to see if this heat is warm enough. This is when I wish I had a little iron. I will be getting a little iron soon. My little iron started spitting. No, it's not warm enough. So I think I'm going to actually pull more of the shirt away. And we're going to prepare this anyway for embroidery. Move this. You don't need to see it. So I'm going to put it on silk. And to make it more manageable when I embroider it, I roll it up. Starting from the bottom. You were with me, Bob, how many hours? I think I remember you saying goodbye and coming back. I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of you staying with me. It was so long. I'm a woman of my word though, you know? And it makes me wonder how much I really showed at the shows. If I only showed one round in six hours, how much did I actually show you guys at shows? That's why people started getting frustrated because they'd stand there waiting and waiting for me to get to what they wanted to see. What do you think I should use to help manage this shirt? Any ideas, those of you who are watching yesterday? Where are you? I may have thought I didn't need them today. And they're the elastic straps, the quiltlets. That's what I use for embroidery as well, to tame an item. This one's open. Man, this chair makes, sounds like squeaky doors. This weekend, I'm organizing my sewing area again. So next week, I'm not... Going, where's that? Where's that? So this is the actual cover-up I'm going to use because it's clear. And so you'll be able to see it better. And all the color that I put on that actual piece will still be visible. Okay, so the quiltlets are elastic straps and safety pins. And I had a brand new set out yesterday. I'll let you kind of look at this label while I run and get it instead of trying to find it. There. It'd be shocking if you could read it. Sorry for not being more organized. I didn't lock Chase out of the room with the window and he's being a good dog. So I'm gonna let him stay there. The quiltlets are pre-cut pieces of elastic and safety pins. Not very high tech.
Now what we do with them is use them in place of your hands to control fabrics that are big. So you can fold the end and then safety pin through. And then we're gonna safety pin through the shirt. And I think about how, where am I at? I'm on the back. So the back of the shirt, we want it really out of our way. And we can gather it up with this elastic and not even pin through it. Now we know as we're embroidering the top of the shirt that the back can't just slide underneath the hoop where we're not being able to see. And then the top. We don't want it to be that far up. We want to be able to position all of that in the hoop. Take another piece of elastic. Where did it go? Oh my goodness. There we go. So these come in handy for lots of things. And even if you're a hand, hand quilter, you can gather up your quilt, strap it, sit on your couch or your lazy boy chair and not have to worry about readjusting it constantly or having the whole quilt like draped all over the room. Lorena, you were with me for all six hours. It's amazing. Okay, now's when we're gonna go and we're gonna pin through the shirt. And this is something I don't really like doing, pinning through a shirt. But so I actually, if I were a professional, I probably wouldn't do it. I would just make do I am a professional though, aren't I? But this will be my shirt. It'll just be another sample. Now we can flip this over and everything will stay. Makes it a lot easier to iron and then much easier to embroider. I wasn't sure if these long format shows would be popular. So many people are in a hurry to embroider for like four minutes or watch something for four minutes. And so they aren't running too long for you guys, apparently. All right. I'm just gonna do a few dots around the perimeter to keep it from moving when I iron. But it sets instantly. It's really amazing stuff. And because it has no stretch, it locks the t-shirt and this is not wax. It's a secret. So many of our products get copied by other people. This is one they have not been able to figure out. Unlike wax, it will hold long, it'll hold better, but it will still remove. Okay, so that shirt no longer has stretch. Now we're gonna iron our drawing on there. So I still need the iron, but I need the butterfly. And based on what I said, honestly, I want to embroider. I want to draw the black. Because then if you don't cover completely, no one can tell because there's black behind it. Does that make sense to you? If it does, give me a thumbs up and don't forget. Hit that like button, definitely helps us with our position in YouTube. And sharing, they love it when you do anything like that. It's gonna be pretty. I think I'm gonna leave this area for another yellow dot. Then I gotta pick my colors. I was going to have music today for you to listen to while I embroidered for part of it, but I seem to not have any trouble 
thinking of something to say. Am I like the chattiest person you ever saw on YouTube? Da 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 da. I did actually fall asleep pretty fast yesterday. I actually went to sleep at 7.30. Couldn't stay awake. You're distracted by work? <laughs> well, that's not right. You shouldn't work when I'm on. <laughs> this is the Octi Hoops, and that's what we're going to show. This is the Hold Light Stabilizer. And it is a fusible, really, really lightweight, iron-on, permanent, tear-away. <laughs> Isn't that a mouthful? Somebody had something to eat. I'm actually not starving today. I was a good girl. I am trying to do a little period or uh, what do they call it? Intermittent fasting. But I probably shouldn't do it on a six hour video day like I did yesterday. Stick and tear is the one with the tree frog. This one, which I'm going to show you next. I haven't used it yet in today's filming. It's the one that will hold everything down on the hoop. If you're not familiar with who I am, if you're lurking in the background and too shy to ask questions, please don't be too shy to ask questions. And know that all of these products can be found at creativefeet.com. Like sewing machine feet. See how these sides of the wings are so different? I think I'm gonna add another yellow dot. I could still change my mind. My chair has character. You know, this This is the one I replaced the other one with because the other one was noisier. So but I'm determined to get under there and try to figure out if I can get it to stop doing that because I like having these really comfortable chairs. As I'm sure you all can appreciate, especially if you want to sit for six hours straight, entertaining everybody. The microphone that I have is supposed to not make, the, not let the machine be really loud so that you can hear my voice while I'm sewing. And it does a really good job of that. But it kind of picks up my chair too. I'm super sensitive to annoying noises though. Some of you might not even notice if I didn't say anything. So this is a Sharpie marker and this is the fine point, not the extra fine. You might want to try starting your tracing with the extra fine point for more control. And I'm using like the side of the marker. Keeping my hand down. Always keep your hand down when tracing. You'll have more control. And try to plan not to put your hand on the artwork as you go. Would have been wiser for me to start over here, do all of that half, and then move over here and do this half. Do what I say, not what I do. There's like a little fold in the whole light right there. It's making my pen skip a little bit. If I ever get soft talking when I'm on this camera, please let me know. Because the camera is pretty far from me. Or the uh, microphone. I try to talk louder when I'm that far away, but sometimes I space out because I'm having too much fun. And this is coloring, so I become like a little girl all over again. I used to kind of like getting sick because my mom would say, what kind of art supplies do you want? And she would go to the store and buy me like a paint by number to do because that was the only way to keep me still. <laughs> This is our cutter pillar, and it has a cutting mat on top that you can actually cut on as well. So you can use this for cutting out your fabrics and coloring. There is a smaller version, the premium, that has a battery, and you can take it to the couch. So I think 
I can't move it. Why can't I move it? <laughs> it's stuck on a seam on my table. I was going to pull the logo up here for you. So you can see it. Yep. There you go. Cutter pillar. And this is the edge to edge mat. So it doesn't have black lines all over it. You do receive a mat with it, with lines. This is one that you might want to get in addition to it. The mat with outlines for doing this kind of work, preparing to do embroidery or applique. This is the ultra mat or the ultra tablet. It's twice the size of the premium and the basic. And right now we have a 15% coupon running till midnight tonight. If you're watching this after the live, this is March 4th, 2021. And our coupon has probably been discontinued. Show 15, all lowercase. Because yesterday I had a pop-up show and I gave everyone a 15% coupon for that. Cutter pillar, like a caterpillar. C-U-T-T-E-R. P-I-L-L-A-R. And I do have links in the description below the video on YouTube when this is over. You can hide the chat and then you can look at the description. I have not written with a marker on this yet. So my brain's going, what if the marker gets on the iron? What do you think? I think that just in case I should probably iron another layer of it on top of it. Just so my iron doesn't get dirty. Seems like a wise decision. Or should I find out? <laughs> Do you guys want me to sacrifice my iron? I have been brave before and regretted it. Let me turn this off. So when we're not using the light, we should turn it off and save it because the light bulb will get worn out. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And I have my crease still. It did not iron away. That's good to know too. Now, as we iron this, we want to hold that still. And we don't want to iron yet because we're going to put cover up under it. This is a vinyl, another stabilizer. It's like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so stabilized. And I'm going to cut it just a little bit bigger. This is one of our top selling products for embroidery. So if you're going, what is she doing that for? I don't have to do that on my embroidery machine. What it does is, does what water soluble stabilizer does, except for it never washes away. So your garment will look good years later. If you've ever embroidered a towel for a family member and never saw it hanging in their, hanging, <laughs> hanging in their bathroom, it may be that they washed it and the water soluble stabilizer washed away and then the embroidery shrank, which can happen from using rayon and cotton threads versus polyester. All these things are things you learn when you are one of the first people to ever embroider with a regular sewing machine on a shirt directly. When free motion embroidery first came out, there were, it wasn't stretch fabric, you guys. Am I dating myself? The beginning of stretch fabric was the beginning of my career. Stretch and sew was out. So some of the marker got on the cover up because I put it on top. And that tells me what? It tells me it's going to get on my iron. And that's the highlighter. So this is going to keep the embroidery lifted off the shirt so it won't sink into the fibers. 
The Sharpie did not come off onto it, but the highlighter did. So another layer. Can't hurt to have two layers once I get this positioned. So I know, and I can't see that very well. Got to make sure that cover-up's under all of it. I think it is. So now we're going to take another piece of the hold light, which is the hummingbird stabilizer. And iron another layer on top. Especially in a t-shirt, you can't stabilize too much because it's a very flimsy thing. Shiny side to the iron. Wouldn't hurt to make it even bigger. There we go. So on the back, so I'll explain it when I flip it over. It's still on. My chair is actually on the cord. So you can, I don't know if you can see that. I do a little dot and you can see how the black it's shiny no it's too far away and then it becomes even easier to see I think I'm gonna remove the safety pen while I do the ironing so I can get it good yeah definitely don't safety pen through the shirt this one you can see I've just secured the elastic to itself. So I haven't pinned and damaged the fiber. This is why your needle size and style matters on garments. Do not use steam with this. It'll just shoot the steam right out at your body and burn you because it's a solid water repellent or waterproof stabilizer. Which is another reason I don't really recommend it on a mask. All right, let me turn this off and it won't be making noise. Time to get this away. And we are almost ready to have fun. The fun part. Okay. Put this back in the drawer so I can find it if I need it. Once again, this is cover up. This is the clear. It comes in rolls, but it also comes in little packs. So you can try it out for the first time. On this towel, I used pink cover up because it was pink thread. And so if I didn't cover it all the way, you can't tell. Of course, always do our best to try and cover it all the way up. But that's why it's called cover up because it covers it up for us. And it comes in 16 colors. And we sell it all the way up to 18 inches wide and 75 feet. We don't go any wider than that because it gets too heavy to ship. Not because people don't want it. Because we have factories that buy 15 rolls of it. But try picking up. I could tell you because we pick it up. And then we roll the giant rolls into smaller rolls for you guys. The Caterpillar tablet is my best friend. They do not pay me to show it to you every week. It is my favorite thing. So you could have your pattern underneath and not have it get displaced as you work, which is what I did when I was showing you how to make Y seams a few shows back. If you want to make Y seams, the tumbling block quilt, I did cover that a few episodes back. Now to get this shirt, in the hoop because there's no clamps or screws on this hoop. How do we get it to connect to the actual frame? And take stick and tear, which is the stabilizer with the tree frog on it, a size big enough to go all the way from one side to the other. And this one I determined is too small for you guys. And I I know a lot of you just mirror me and do exactly what I do on videos. So I'm going to go with a little bit bigger. So you don't struggle, especially on your first time. You can try getting really close to the hoop as you get more comfortable with them. Where'd I put my big skin tear? I used it yesterday. 
should be on the floor. I'm so glad you don't have to see me fumbling around anymore. Yeah, grab my thread while I'm on it. Feel free to ask me questions because I'm going to start sewing and once I'm sewing, it'll be hard for me to look. There it is. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to clean my sewing area. Every week I get a little bit more organized and then I film. So this is how it comes in that roll. And it has a, a release liner on one side. So on this side it is paper, but on this side it's polyester material. It is not paper. So if you've ever had a needle gumming issue using a Hesa back tearaway stabilizer, it was because it wasn't our stabilizer. See, that's why I can't remember stuff. Because I just toss things. So you oh man, I wrote on my how'd I do that? I thought there was you know why you know how that happened? I thought the paper that's under this was on this. So I actually because the light was on and I couldn't tell. So I wrote on my mat. I'll let you know how I get it off. If you ever do anything like that. The cover up went under the decal, yes. So you want to make sure that the decal is a good amount bigger than the cover up. Otherwise, it won't be stuck to your shirt. This is one way of cutting your stabilizer for the hoop because it is like a ruler. And you could actually cut out fabric for a quilt. You could stack as many layers as you can cut with a rotary cutter beneath this and use this as a template to cut octagon pieces for quilting. Fussy cutting, because you can see through. I'm probably going to make one one day. It's staying really well. I thought it might slip around. If it stays, that's awesome. It's definitely then faster to cut with a rotary cutter. And hang on to these little pieces because if you were to embroider like a small butterfly, you can use that to patch because our stabilizer is the only one that adheres to itself and patches. We're always trying to utilize all of what is inside of here. Coloring books is great. And now you can find coloring book pages online by searching Google. People actually give you free ones. They're expecting you to color. But remember, if you use any design to sell something that you make, like on Etsy, you have to make sure it's copyrighted. I mean that it's not. And I have some art that I provide as part of the OctaHoop purchase that you can actually sell on Etsy. The deal is if you become like a person mass producing, then you have to let me in on the deal. There we go. So then you fold back the release liner. And the way I get it started was I fold it usually, but it just was real easy this time. You pull back a little bit. Kind of like laying shelf paper. You don't want to roll the whole, you don't want to peel it all the way off and then try to manage that whole stickiness. And just fold that back and then apply it to the hoop so that it's lined up with the edge of that hoop. And then rub on that so it's secure. Then lay it back and pull.
save this paper for doing glitter work and other types of things. It's not freezer paper. Pretty sure this is what I tried to iron the other day. It did not iron. But I have some ideas for using it so we don't waste it. Yeah, I'll be trying alcohol. That'll be my first thing that I try, rubbing alcohol, because it's an alcohol pen. So as I stretch, and then I rub it, then we spin it, and we grab the next angle, stretch it, and rub it. And you see how it was able to be lifted? It's repositionable for a period of time. And what you're looking for <clears throat> is that there's no like creases or wrinkles along the perimeter. And then when we lay this down, for those of you who come, came in late, and you're never late because you can always rewind these videos, this goes immediately live on our YouTube channel. And it remains in Facebook as well. If you're watching on Facebook, most of you are on YouTube today. So we can take the the hold light that's on the back is going to stick onto this and you can hear how tight I have it. Everywhere this is, this will no longer be usable. So we don't want to go overboard unless we have to. This is a pretty good size butterfly. So I'm not over using it. And then we're going to lay it down. And you kind of get one chance to do this because the stick and tear and the hold light love one another. They do not want to let go of each other. So start like with the middle and put it in the middle. We'll go diagonally. Okay. <laughs> Once we start sewing, it's it's on there. And what does that mean? That means your shirt is secured as well. But because we used hold light on top of the cover-up, and the cover-up is loose, it's not actually adhered to this, I'm going to do a running stitch around the butterfly before I do any embroidery. This is a good time for you to ask any questions from where I began to now. Any of you have any questions? And we're at 3.43, an hour and 43 minutes. These things always go longer than I think. I haven't even started embroidering. You guys having fun? Any of you sewing? Sometimes I can have light. Sometimes you can't see. The camera squints, and then you guys can't see. Hopefully I'll be able to have some light. And then you think, okay, what color should I start with? What do you think? Should we start with the lightest color, or should we start with the black? What do you think? Got any guesses? Anyone going? You're supposed to be teaching us. It's not fair. I'm going to start with black. And the reason I am is because it's so easy to forget to actually draw those black lines. And then once they're, once you do all the pretty colors, if the black lines are gone, they're gone. I don't know. That's not what I did when I did another design. I actually did the black last. Decisions, decisions. You can actually do either way. It's really not a hard, fast rule. It's not ink. It's not paint. To blend, you do what's called shading instead. At least a little bit of organization. I'm going to use this, the uh, stretch needle. And the reason I'm using a stretch needle, anyone want to guess why? What kind of shirt is this? It's a stretch shirt. 
So a stretch needle in a 9014 size, which is a fabulous needle for embroidery, as it has a unique shape. It's flatter than any other needle. Comes closer to the hook of the sewing machine. And what that does is it, is it eliminates the chances of your fabric grabbing the actual needle, which stretch fabrics tend to do, and causing shredding of the thread because the hook comes around and snags the thread instead of picking it up. Come on, there's got to be a stretch needle in here. I have lots of them, I'm sure. If I don't use a stretch needle, a super universal would be my next choice. And then a regular universal or a top stitch. And they all have a rounded tip, but the stretch will make sewing easier. I found it. That's what happens when you have so many packs of needles. I've seen some really great ideas for organizing needles. People take binders and you get those plastic inserts and they stitch across and then cut a little slit and they stick the needle packs in there. It's a really good idea. Thought it was clever. So no matter what, I have to gather my threads. And this machine is stuck to the table with a little tacky stuff to keep this part of my machine connected because it fell apart from shipping. So I gotta move it. I gotta have my elbows down when embroidering, which means I'm probably gonna have to move the sewing machine that you guys see, see how it's dropping down. Well, you may not be able to see that. So having it stuck to the table, eliminated that. There's something else under that. One of the accessory guides from yesterday. Now it's stuck again. <laughs> I think that's good. All right, I'm gonna organize the other camera and have you guys watch while I do it because I gotta see it. Wow, that's not bad. Can you see the needle? Cool, cool. I think that's good enough. I don't have to adjust it. Okay, let's see what colors. I have a really pretty bright yellow. And I think I'm gonna start with the light colors. So this is a pretty yellow, isn't it? This is, I think, the most fun part. And as I said, I'll have the colors I use in the kit or the pattern. Are you guys excited? How many of you have the Octi Hoops? If you have the Octi Hoops already, they're called Octi Hoops, not whatever I said. If you have them already, hit, do a thumbs up. Share with people, let them know if you've used them. What other colors do I need? I need like a light blue and a light green. I'll walk around and get that. So I don't have to get up again. I'm, I might have switched the chairs on accident and have the noisy one instead of the non-noisy one. I know I just saw that light blue one. So. Green. Pretty. <clears throat> okay. It's getting warm in here. Another way to make embroidery fun is to use our inks and ink your fabric first. Let's ink pretty lime green, blue. I didn't grab black. Thought I was doing good. I may already have it here. Oh, so 
sorry, whatever I'm stepping on. It says that I lost my camera and I did. That's what I get for moving that, comp that sewing machine for some reason. So I'm gonna be quiet for a minute simply because I'm restarting the actual cameras. But then do I really need to? If the rest of the video will be me embroidering, I'd actually be easier on the actual computer if I don't. I recommend you reduce your speed if you have the ability to 30% less than normal. Sorry, microphone. Okay, so this is my speed control and I can go really fast, but you may not be ready for that. So you take your speed control. I usually do like a fingernail size when I'm at a show and letting someone try it. And then I'm gonna use a straight stitch. You can use a zigzag stitch, but it is an advanced technique. So using a straight stitch, center needle, and then reducing the thread tension because the sewing machine does not have a fairy inside to adjust the tension as we move the hoop and you lower the feed dogs. And yesterday I was live doing free motion and I never lowered the feed dogs to like three quarters of the way through. So those who are watching know that that's true. If you can't lower your feed dogs, you can still do this. Kiss the sea turtle. And this is a really good camera to show you the butterfly. What I was able to do with Sharpie markers and all those colors are gonna remain beneath it. It's a surefire way of doing embroidery, free motion. All right, because it's distracting my brain, I'm going to restart those cameras. Yes, you can use these with a vintage machine, Terry. Absolutely. Super exciting, huh? You can use it on featherweight. You can even use it on a treadle, because all I use is a straight stitch. And it doesn't matter if your feed dog's lower or not. It's so fun. Oh, thank you, Donna. Yes, yeah, she, she's done she's done a lot of things. She's one of the people that jumps in, does cannonball into the creative. Then stabilizer attached to the hoop is the tree frog, also known as the green frog stabilizer, but its real name is stick and tear. And you'll find it under the stabilizers link at creativefeet.com. You won't find it on Amazon. We don't have enough time to satisfy them with all of our products at this point. We're working toward getting all of our stuff on there. But for right now, none of our stabilizers are offered on Amazon. I'm looking at the feed before I go mic silent for a minute. Just to see if anyone had anything in particular that I should answer before. Meanwhile, that's a pretty spot, and I will be back shortly as soon as the cameras restart.
You guys hear me yet? Yes, you do. All right. I want to do the black first, but I can teach you better if I don't. So I'm going to do another one. So I really do need a light color thread and I would use our lingerie thread for this in the bobbin. And the lingerie thread stretches. So what that does is it increases the bobbin tension without you having to increase the bobbin tension. So just the act of this thread being between the tension discs of the bobbin tension makes it pull on the needle thread, eliminating the chance of the bobbin thread coming up to the top. And as I suggest with the invisible thread, I don't suggest you cut using the machine slicing with a thread that stretches because as you're holding it and you slice, you're stretching it and then it can, it can unstretch and go out of the tension and you don't know it until you start sewing and you have a bad looking stitch. So to not use the cutting, you just kind of get it in there and leave it hanging. And I'm gonna change to yellow thread. Instead of having you see my arm go across, switching cameras, because I got to get over to the thread dispenser, which is what I use to put thread on my machine. I do not take the spool and put it on my sewing machine. It eliminates a lot of thread skipping sh or stitches skipping, thread shredding, looping. The thread dispenser is designed to handle cones of thread better than just putting it on your machine. So the color I'm gonna start with is the lightest yellow. I guess so. Cause in my hand, <laughs> that's how scientific this is. So I put it on one of the stand up cone stands because there's two. And then I take it through the thread guide that is used to wind a bobbin, but I don't use any more of the bobbin winding parts. Then I just pretend that the spool is on the machine holding the thread as I thread through and then letting go as I need to get more slack. And then you don't have the problem with your thread getting tangled up inside of your machine and you'll get a more consistent tension. Now I'm gonna use my needle threader. Oh no, I gotta change my needle. That would have been awful. Well, Donna, you're busy. You and Sharon, you guys are getting to know each other. Have any of you exchanged phone numbers yet? And partly for those of you who are lurking and may not know who I am or know that I have a school, I have a free online school. So a lot of the people in the feed are students and are getting to know each other here on the live feed and also inside Create with Claire Rowley, which is the name of my school. Octaves took you a while to get used to? Most of getting the machine to act right. Remember, you can always reach out if you ever need help. And I should have had that branding at the top of my screen the whole time. So you guys know what's going on when you pop in. There's all these buttons that you have to push. You were frustrated for the first year? I just want you to know that I struggled as well in the beginning. I invented them and I struggled. So you need to be easy on yourself. In the beginning, it's a unfamiliar thing. They're very weird looking to begin with. And your brain has to be trained on how to use them. I love seeing you guys support one another. Reinforcements, because when I say something, people just go, oh, that's her. It's just Claire. She can do anything. And the truth is that if you want anything, you have to work at it sometimes. 
took two times to thread the needle. I did change to a stretch 9014 needle, which is the best option for a stretch material. And then I'm going to get in the position and make sure the machine is pushed back so that you can rest your body on the actual table. You also want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to hurt your elbow because with the Octi hoops, you actually do rest and all the muscles on your upper body get to relax and get rest, rest on the table. So if you're not doing that yet, you have to learn how to do that. And it may be that your machine is too close and that you need to push it back. And I'm not pushing this machine back any further because every time I do the cameras turn off and they're not connected to one another. So it's, they must be somehow. Then we have these little handles and they drop into the frames into any one of the eight holes that are on the frame. Just like that. And then you move your fingers when you color instead of holding your hands on the fabric like this. And how many of you still like catch yourself getting in there and holding on with your hands? If you're having the hoop fall off your machine, you're pushing down on the hoop. So it's a very light floating feeling where to make sure that nothing's going to get caught like this shirt. And I think I got good range here where it won't get stuck. If you want to peek, make sure that there isn't any of the shirt under the hoop because you'll sew the shirt to the shirt. <laughs> if you've ever done that before, hit a thumbs up because it's a normal thing. Just know people make mistakes all the time. Now you have to lower the foot, even though there is no foot. I have removed the foot. This is in essence a foot because what does the foot do for you? It holds the fabric down. So the hoop is holding the fabric down, eliminating the need for the foot. However, you can see it's kind of lifting up where the cover up is. And you know what would have made that hold down is our liquid based glue. I should have spread our liquid, liquid based glue under the cover up first, and then it would, it would be held down better. So since I'm not going to take this apart, I'm going to do what I call a, I, I said it before, I'm going to do a stitch that's kind of just like a big stitch around the butterfly that I'm going to remove later. So they're giant spacings to hold the, the template that I drew onto the actual shirt and I can remove it later. Something feels like it's stuck. Oh, I didn't bring the bobbin thread up. Did it get stuck on something? Something else. Definitely feels stuck. That's not good. <laughs> well, now you know how I fixed it. <laughs> so I should have pulled the bottom thread up. And now you know why. Because that can happen. The, the thread got stuck on part of the body of the machine. So I'm at least going to cut this needle thread. You should always cut your tails before you begin. Elbows down, shoulders relax, which I'm not able to do, by the way, because camera, if I put my, both my elbows down really well, you can't see. My head will be in your way. So see, I'm just anchoring this template down. All those stitches will be removed. Really one of the most important reasons to use a stretch needle and not just some sharp needle, which will cut that t-shirt. So we're gonna remove those stitches. And I could do bigger stitches than this. They don't need to be so close. It'll be harder to remove them if they're closer. When you get uncomfortable, you take the handle out and you can rotate the hoop and use another hole in another position because you have eight to choose from. Just make sure your hand's always down so you have more control. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed, teeth unclenched, eyes not squinted, glasses on if you need them. Breathe, do a calming breath before you start, especially if you're stressed. 
If you're going to embroider on a t-shirt for your very first project, you're more likely to be stressed than if you just practice on a piece of fabric that you can later turn into a zipper pouch. Even use it for dog bones, I like to say. There. So now that's secure and that won't move. And I can hop over. And this is the lightest yellow. So everywhere I have the highlighter, I'm going to go and sew there. And I don't have to cut. I can hop over and just start coloring. And you may want to actually pretend to color and look at your hand. Watch how your fingers move. That's the same movement you want. You don't want to switch to this, which your instincts might kick in and you might do that. Just remember, you don't have to go fast. It's really up to you how fast you sew. You will have an easier time filling in if you go up and down because you can see between the stitches. So if I were to move the hoop this way and have to move the hoop sideways, you can't see over the mountain of the thread. So I always try to have an up and down movement. It's also easier on the needle. And then we want to take some of that light color up into the blue because we want it to look shaded. If you're good at embroidery already, you can use a zigzag stitch and do this quicker. This is a beginner lesson. So we're just using a straight stitch. And back in the day, this would be considered an advanced technique. We used to do portrait embroidery with a straight stitch and all the rest of the embroidery was done with a zigzag. Lots of people sew barefoot. We could do a poll right now in the chat. How many of you sew barefoot? How many of you sew with your foot control backwards and use just your big toe to steer your machine? These hoops are great for quilting, yes, Donna. But today's all on embroidery. I'm trying to separate the techniques because some people have no interest in embroidery and some people have no interest in quilting. And I'm not wearing my glasses. So that's going to change right now because I can't tell if I'm filling in. Try to keep it so you can see it. It's already coming alive. Isn't that fun, you guys? I wish I had some music for you to... I almost did. And I ran out of time. So I'm outlining, and then I go up and back, and up and back, and I'm going into the blue... I was going to do green here. Totally forgot. I still can, though. I could do yellow, green, and then blue, and that would even be prettier. The more you shade, the prettier and richer it looks. So now I can just go over here and go to the circles. And I can do the circles with a zigzag motion instead of a zigzag stitch. Back in the day, embroidery machines, or all machines, when you would use a zigzag stitch, you could taper the zigzag and it would get wider on both sides and narrow on both sides. So you could do like lemon drop shapes. But once computerized machines kicked in, they have a straight side and then the zigzag gets wider on one side and it kind of has a wall on the left hand side. Such a bummer. But this hoop allows you to be a a stitch with dial and then I go around that so in a minute I'll show you how with this well, I'll just show you now with the cell phone how much more lifted it is when you do this technique and it's all still straight stitch remember just a straight stitch so even your vintage machines can do it can you see how that stitch is lifted it's kind of a bump and how flat that is. See how pretty, guys? And I'm just drawing. It's so much fun. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. I'm gonna stop for a minute because I can, if I'm not moving, I can use it as a photo later. That'll be another good photo. There we go. <laughs> Get to see me planning ahead for photography to be used for school. It's amazing what we can do with our cell phones today. 
Okay, back to it. So all the round dots are going to be this yellow. And because it's not an embroidery machine, we can do all of the yellow all at once instead of having to change. Because if you have an embroidery machine, it has like a hoop size and it'll do all the color. It'll do all of one color that it that is within the hoop. So if they have to move over to another sewing field, they'd have to change colors of thread. So it's really nice. When I did my eagle, I did all of the brown. And then I did all of the gray all at once. Then I did all the white all at once. Those are called carryover stitches where you hop over. It's good to maintain, like, trim it as you go. I go a circle. So I'm outlining and leaving that black line because I could put black around it. But I could also not put black, so you gotta kind of decide. I think it'll be pretty if I do black, more like a cartoon. So see, I'm moving the hoop with my finger. If you can move from one end of the circle to the other like that, you can do it because you're doing that exact thing with your hand down, resting on the machine, and you're just moving like that with the handle in the hole, which people are calling pegs which some people call crayons, but they're not. They're just handles. They're steering devices. They're to train your brain or make your brain think you're coloring. And you'll notice my left hand jumped up there, but it does not have to be there. And I don't argue with myself. If I feel like doing that, I let it. It's kind of like when you write, you support the paper and you support the pen. And some of you may be afraid to sew through your fingers. The number one way to sew through your finger is to stare at your finger because then you could move in that direction. But since we have something to color over, think of it this way. If you're sewing yellow thread and you're going over the yellow area, if your finger isn't over the yellow area, you're not going to sew through your finger. Hop over and then sew a circle and then start moving in a zigzag motion. So this butterfly will be multi-dimensional. And you can sew as slow as you want. You don't have to go fast. Your eyesight is what limits you on how fast you can do these things. And some people try to move their hands really fast because it's what you see other people do, but it is not gonna make it easier for you to do that. Now I'm going to go all the way over there because the rest of these yellows is going to be a next color. And it would waste thread if I, you know, pull it over there. So I'm actually going to cut it. But I don't want to use my scissor button because it cuts my bobbin thread too short. So pull it out a little bit till you see slack. And then you can cut. And if you lift the foot, even though it is no foot, you can pull that out. And now I need to cut my bobbin thread. Now I'm free to go over here. And depending on your brain, you may or may not like having the butterfly upside down. But remember, it is best to always be going up and down so that you can see that you're filling in the area. And now I'm going to show you what, you sh what I should have shown you before. You bring your bobbin thread up. Because there's no foot, you can really see where that needle is. If the needle is above that spot, well, it's going to go in that spot. And then holding the thread, bring the, the needle back up, and then pull on the thread, and your bobbin thread will come up. And you'll see this is a much thinner thread than the 40 weight. This is the lingerie thread, white lingerie available at creativefeet.com. And that is the 40 weight poly fast embroidery thread available at creativefeet.com. It's getting more challenging for me to make it so you can see without the t-shirt getting in the way. Isn't it comforting to know that the elastic strap is holding onto that 
t-shirt so the bottom can't all of a sudden slip beneath the hoop. I felt like I had more places to embroider the yellow, but nope, just the highlights. Isn't that great? Because I have I have it already there. The in other words, because the color is there, I can't forget. I actually pulled the, the bobbin thread out. And I can tell because the needle thread is looping. Opposite of logic means I have to cut the thread and pull out the hoop and pull up my bobbin thread. Put the bobbin in again is what I mean to say. So if it's loopy on the top, it's the bobbin. If it's loopy on the bottom, it's the top. Always thread your machine with the foot up and you have to sew with it down. If you can't get your bobbin thread to come up, it's because your foot is up. Or you miss the take up lever, which is up inside the machine. That would be another reason you can't get your bobbin thread to come up. Once again, do over. Really want to take those threads out. I think I can cover them. Bring the bobbin thread up again. And sew a few stitches. Then cut them off. These are my favorite scissors for this. And these are the Appliquick, the little ones. They're really, really tight. So they cut threads all the way up to the tip. Wonderful. Okay, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Hi, Karen Dean, Rebecca Pierce, Leslie G. Everybody else, I think I said hi to you. Sarah said hi to you. I don't know if I did, but I meant to. I think I answered a question. Sharon Keeson, Donna Trugolo, Terry V. You guys are my regulars. Rebecca Pierce, hi. Names is my challenge. I'm getting better, but I may have already said hi to some of you and uh, can't say hi too many times, right? So make sure you all know that I know you're there and I appreciate having you here with me. And I love watching you guys talk to one another in the chat. But feel free to ask questions as I do look up periodically and check. I'm hopping over to the next one. Since it's a short trip, I don't have to cut my thread. Go into the blue. And when I go up into the blue, I try to stay on the same line of stitching. So I'll explain that better. See, I know I've got it all nice and filled in on the bottom. And now I'm going to blend in there. And when I go up, I try to come right back down on where I went up. That is a lesson that's good to practice, to go up and come back down. But if you if your thread breaks, it means you're sitting on the thread to, you're not moving your hands fast enough for the speed of the machine. Elbows down, shoulders relax, breathe. Listen to music that you like to sing with so you can get your mind off of what you're doing and it gets easier. Go up into the blue, we're blending. You can outline first. This is a large area, I tend to do that when I have a big area. And then you can see I can pick up my speed because I feel comfortable. And you'll probably do the same thing. All of a sudden you'll be like, this is really easy. Why did I have so much trouble with it? I don't know. <laughs> now I'm gonna go over to the circles. And when I do that, it's not too far for me to travel. I gotta go from here to there. I raise the foot, so that releases the tension and lets me get over there without straining the needle. You guys still can see. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. So around in a circle. 
and then move the hoop in a side to side motion. And when I do this sideways like this, my whole body rocks. I get a little dizzy. You're not allowed to call me a dizzy blonde, you guys. Okay, now I'm gonna hop to the next one again. Raise the foot, slide up, lower the foot. So what happens when you use an embroidery machine is when it hops over like that, it actually does that. It does what we do when we raise the foot. It opens the discs, releasing the thread, protecting the needle from breaking. It also changes tension as you move the hoop around or at it, as it moves the hoop. So we don't have that automatic tension changing behavior when we're doing free motion, which is why I lower my tension one number lower to begin with so that I would be gentle or on the needle as I move it. But another reason we don't end up with puckering is because of the shape of the hoop. The octagon shape is really strong, so we can't disfigure it by squishing in. And as the thread builds, if the tension is tighter than a round hoop would bear, a round hoop will end up be bowing in and becoming oval. And a square hoop will do the same thing. It will bend this way. And this is why when I developed this, I chose the octagon shape. One of the reasons. There are so many things that the octagon shape allows us to do that we would not get away with with a round hoop. Raise the foot, slide it over, drop it down. Go around a couple times and then move the hoop side to side. So we are the zigzag stitch. And you don't have to do that. If you wanted to, you could just fill in your circle with a straight stitch. I'm just showing you more than one technique so that you can see how pretty it ends up looking when you alter your stitch types. You can see here my stay stitch is starting to come apart because of how I sewed it. And I wanted it to come apart easy, but I don't want it to come apart before I'm ready for it to be part. So I'm going to go ahead and sew some more around that to keep that template from lifting. Being neat and tidy, cutting my tails. My feed dogs, I almost always forget to lower them. So it does not matter with the octa hoops. It doesn't really cause any interference. If I'm filming with a high def camera like I am, the feed dogs are tapping, but without pressure from above, without a foot pushing down from above, they do not cause any problems. Raise the foot, pull out a little bit just to give it slack so that you can cut it without the thread coming back out of the needle. Because without a foot there, that would happen. If you cut it, if it's only coming down from there to there and I snap it off, it would unthread itself. It's very frustrating. Has that happened to any of you? Go ahead and hit the like button. If that's happened to you before, your thread just unthreads itself right before your eyes and you're like, well, that's not fair. I don't want to have to thread the needle over and over again. So now I'm going to re-secure this template. I did not cut my bobbin thread, so I don't have to bring it back up. The fabric is getting caught on the machine. And right now, if you're coming in late, this is a template that I drew on. It's our hold light stabilizer. Beneath the coloring is another stabilizer called Cover Up, and it is a, a vinyl that lifts the embroidery above the fabric forever. And these both of these stabilizers are permanent. And the color you see is Sharpie markers. So you can trace designs using your window or you can get a light tablet like I have. And the cutter pillar, oh, I made those stitches so close. I should not have talked while I did it. You should be making bigger stitches so they come out easier. Oh well, that's what I get for talking while sewing. Okay, that's all that I'm gonna do with this yellow. No, I was thinking about the eyes being this color. That's a waste of thread. But you guys only have so much time. 
this time I'm not going to do the zigzag stitch, just doing circles and started at the biggest point of that area and tapered down until my circle got little and I know that I've covered it all the way up. Hopping over to the other eyeball, go around the outside and then swirling around until I come in the middle. You'll hear it start to get loud. If it gets really loud, that's when you're at risk of breaking your thread and needle. And it just means you've put too much thread there. I think I could put a little more around this. But you can hear it get go like, hey, you keep doing that. You're going to break your needle or your thread. Lift, cut just the needle thread. Because we don't have to cut our bobbin thread. It's up and we don't have to bring it up. We just change our needle color. Because I'm staying with light color thread, I can continue to just use the white bobbin. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do the blue and I'm going to take the blue towards the middle and then I'm going to end with the green in between so it will blend those two colors together. Bye, Bob. I, can, I just can't make a two an hour video or a two hour video. We're at four hours, 23 minutes. And it's not like I'm wasting time, right? And I've based the format on the show on people saying, yeah, I want you to keep going. I want you to show the whole thing. And so just editing a video. This way you can see if I have trouble. I mean, it is transparency. This is a transparent show. You get to see what I do. And if I break a needle, I break a needle. If I don't, I don't. And you can see if there's any problems and there isn't, which means what? It means the products actually work. These things actually are within your reach. I just pushed the button twice. I already threaded the needle. Okay, so I'm double checking everything because you should. You make sure the foot's down. Now the foot should be up when you thread it. So before beginning a new color, it's not a bad idea to lift the foot, pull the thread a little bit and then lower it and make sure you can see the needle kind of deflect a little bit as you pull gently. Then you know the tension is engaged and you're not gonna get loops on the bottom of your embroidery, also known as the bird's nest. Now, I've only gone two hours and 20 minutes. I know yesterday was six hours. That's not happening today. My cutoff time is five. We'll see if I can do it. If not, I'm my own boss, so I'm the only one who will get annoyed by me. So I really like knowing I finish things with you guys because I know I'd appreciate it. Nothing like being shown only part of a lesson. That's when your lesson... Or if you're sewing, you might stop right there and go, well, I got that far. Like she just put it off. I won't keep, I won't keep going now. And I'm not sore. So why shouldn't I keep going? And that's because my elbows are down the whole time. It's very relaxing. All right, here we go. So now I'm under the blue. And I'm going to... Do a little bit of straight stitch and then I'm going to show you zigzag and that is a way to speed this up. Cut the tails. So I can keep doing the straight stitch and going up and down or I can switch to a zigzag stitch which is a regular zigzag stitch and that's where the needle goes left and right and that's all it does with no feed dogs. Stitch length is irrelevant. But the needle now is going to swing left and right. So you have to point your fabric in that direction. This is when it gets harder. It would be easier to learn not on a not on a t-shirt. So I'm going to go all the way to seven on my zigzag width. And the tension changed. That's where you can get into danger with an embroidery machine. Where you don't know that your tension just changed. And when you switch from straight stitch to zigzag, it's even more important your tension be lighter. So now you can see how the needle swings. That's laying down more thread per stitch. So this will fill in faster. But you have to pay attention 
into the direction you're moving the hoop. And you can go out of the lines, but it actually looks very pretty. Now, if I hop from here to there, I'm gonna be okay because the black's gonna go over that and I won't cut that carryover. If I cut the carryover, that thread could start to unwrap or come out of the fabric. You could also just kind of move the fabric until you know you've done like three stitches close to each other to tie a makeshift knot. So see how I'm having to turn the hoop? That's why this would be considered more advanced. And this is the widest width, making it the most difficult. So some of you are probably going, uh, I don't know about that. I think I'd stick with the straight stitch. But this is the only way to make this video not go four hours. So I'm gonna do part of it with a zigzag, so it's faster. And I do have students every once in a while ask, how can I go faster? And I go, time for you to do the zigzag stitch. You're ready if you feel like it's taking too long to fill in. See how much faster that was? So I'm doing that makeshift knot by just moving it so that it sews in the same spot. So it won't come out, especially on a shirt, it's gonna get washed. Whoops, where am I? <laughs> My handle was way too far. That's what was going on. Elbows down, shoulders relax. Pay attention to where the stitch is gonna go. See how it's kind of like driving a truck? You're turning your steering wheel. You have to turn the steering wheel when using a zigzag stitch. When using a straight stitch, you don't. Crossed over. Don't cover up that black line because we're going to draw with black thread over it. It's okay if you go a little bit too far like I did, went all the way to the yellow because my green will cover that up. And the green is really close to the blue in color. So it's going to be a very subtle shading, which will make it look rich, kind of like a butterfly's wings. way too far again. Move to the next hole. But nice, so you can always keep your elbows down. Now this area is small, so I'm going to go down to a five on the width instead of stressing myself out with such a wide width. It's still pretty wide. It'll still look that fluffier look. Okay, now I'm going to switch to a straight stitch tie that knot, come over because I'm going all the way over here and I'm going to cut that carry over so it doesn't bother me. Now if I want to mimic that look, I would have to move the hoop in a zigzag motion and I will do that here because it's so small. It would be nearly impossible to navigate that zigzag stitch. So now it looks like I used a zigzag stitch. Just to make it easier to film. I'm gonna just keep doing that. Instead of using a zigzag stitch, I'm using a zigzag motion with my fingers, creating the appearance that I did a zigzag stitch. So you'll see this looks just like that. Cheater. Because I like to cheat when I can. Now this used to break needles. If you move the hoop this dramatically, while the machine was running, you would break a needle, but not with the octa hoops. The octa hoops, because of their shape and how secure this shirt is, it won't damage the shirt and it won't break your needle. The number one way people break needles with the octa hoops is by picking up the hoop and breaking the needle when the machine is off because there's no foot there. This is how we zigzag without a zigzag stitch for those of you who have a featherweight. So every time you've seen an embroidery done with a zigzag stitch, free motion, now you know you just need the octa hoops and you can do a fake zigzag stitch. Hopped over. So I'm just moving the hoop bigger. The machine's running really slow. And you'll get a rhythm after a while. And I totally forgot to raise the feed dogs back or lower the feed dogs because they drop down again. 
For those of you who are wondering about that. And I'm not worried about it. Because I almost always sew without them lowered. I forget half the time. I don't like the way the machine sounds when I use the actual feed dogs down. It makes weird noises. Every time I stop the machine, it, it makes a noise. So this is actually more relaxing to leave the feed dogs up. One of my favorite things is the expressions that I see at, at shows of people going, she's not lowering the needle. She's not lowering her feed dogs. Why isn't anything falling apart? How come that's working? And when I would be doing something like this at a show and people would come up and they can't figure out what they're seeing that's wrong. Something feels wrong as they walk up. And it's the no foot. So if you're just coming in to watch the live feed, that may be your thought right now. You may be going, why can I see so well? Why can I see everything she's doing? Because there's no foot in my way. And then these, they're not, there doesn't need to be a foot in your way either. You just need the octa hoops. So I'm going to cut my needle thread again, not my bobbin thread. Because why would I want to bring my bobbin thread up over and over again? Staying on a light color. So I don't need to do anything but change my needle thread. Any of you have any questions? Once again, this is the 40 weight poly fast, 100% polyester, 40 weight thread. If I were embroidering on an infant outfit, I would be using rayon or cotton thread because it's softer against their skin. And now I have this beautiful green, which I, I don't have ever used. And this will blend the blue and the yellow together on the bottom wings. And this will be all I use on the rest of the top part of the butterfly. Once again, this is the thread dispenser, which we're currently having to do a run on. We're about a week out from shipping. So if you order one today, we won't be able to ship it for a week. This, the, that was tongue tied. This machine, when I use the needle threader, opens up the tension discs, pushes the thread through. So it's not as likely that I will ever need to actually raise the foot to make sure the thread's in the tension disc, but I do so because it's good to build a habit so that if you're ever using a machine, like you're at somebody's house or you have more than one machine and it doesn't have that, you don't go 15 minutes in and flip it over and see loops all over the bottom of your work. How many of you had bird's nests show up before? Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you have. Because you're part of the, of the group if you have, and we've all been through it. Well, maybe not all of us, some people are lucky. Maybe you'll be lucky and you'll never experience any of these problems. So I'm going to put the green in between these blue and yellow and I'm switching back to a straight stitch, which, you know, is easier. Oh, see my machine goes, you didn't lower your foot and it has a button for that. So a few stitches tie your, to tie your knot and then cut it. And this is my opportunity because my scissors are in my hand to cut any of those. But what this also means is wherever you see a carryover on top, there's one on the bottom. This is partly why some people will stop, cut their bobbin thread, so they don't have any threads to get caught possibly on the machine below. But those are really short, so it's unlikely to get caught on anything. If you wanna be sure, you can always stop, cut your thread top and bottom. At this point, take it out, flip it over, and cut all your carryovers, carry over threads away. <laughs> Partly why I'm using a straight stitch now is because I used a zigzag and I want to blend down to the straight stitch. My pillow is sliding. I'm starting to slide out of my seat. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Breathe. It's not a bad idea to do, to do a cleansing breath. 
shake your shoulders, kind of shake your neck a little bit. Make sure everything's loose and relaxed. You don't want to be really tense when doing this. A soft touch. So now I'm going partly into the blue, partly into the yellow. And I'm really resting. Good, I got a good position. And I'm just going to cross over the road to the next one. And I'm not even going to stop. Making sure I don't cover up the black line. Go up into the blue, go up into the yellow, up into the blue, up into the yellow. Straight stitch is much easier than zigzag for blending. Determined how much thread is laid down is determined how fast your fingers move in relation to how fast the machine is running. And I can cross right over the road to go over here as well, because that black thread is going to cover that. As long as you don't do it too much. My other dog, Chase, is taking his position in his bed. If you don't know, I do have two dogs that sew with me every day. Chase and Tinkerbell. And they were the best dogs on the planet yesterday. Because <laughs> I sewed for almost six hours with you guys. Very close to six hours. So once you get your groove on, you don't have to stop and hop over. You'll get the idea that you can just drive over there. Kind of like quilting. When you do free motion quilting, you can sew outside of the quilt on the batting to get over to the next section instead of having to cut your thread. Whatever we can do to not have to bring that bobbin thread up. Blending up into the blue and coming back down. It's so pretty, guys. I don't know if you can see how pretty it is. And my left hand is just stabilizing the paper like I would do that if I were drawing on paper. This this hand's not moving the hoop. Just the fingers, just the fingers on the handle is all that's doing the movement. Make sure there's nothing under your elbow to make you uncomfortable because you should have elbows down, shoulders relaxed, hand resting on the machine. Moving only fingers to steer, just as you would color with a pen or a crayon. Now I'm going to drive over to the next area. You can see the feed dog interactions a little bit there, but not enough to make it so I can't sew. Now I'm sewing my speed. But really, I can't see. I need to put my glasses on to keep that up. Don't feel pressured by how fast I'm sewing. This is one of, this is almost, no, I've been sewing a lot, a lot of years before that. This is something I've been doing since I was 15. I haven't done it constantly since I was 15. But boy, did I love it. I became a certified machine embroidery instructor at 16. Started teaching at my parents' store. Became addicted. I embroidered towels for all my nieces with Disney characters. Started designing my own embroidery designs and teaching my art on fabric with people. And that's what we're going to be doing starting soon in the school, Create with Claire Rowley. I'm going to teach my eagle, which I showed earlier. So after this video is over, you can look back at the video because it'll immediately be live and you can see the eagle or if you guys remind me before this is over to show it to you again if I can. This is free motion embroidery on a t-shirt. Now in the past we could not embroider on t-shirts. We had to make patches and sew them onto t-shirts afterward. This is just like an embroidery machine, but you're the embroidery unit. So everything is stabilized and supported as we would do with an embroidery machine. All of our stabilizers can be used on your embroidery machine, even if you're a factory or you're running high-speed industrial machines. Our embroidery stabilizers are used by some of the top 
manufacturers of embroidered goods. I don't say their name because I don't have the permission to say their name. Now I can see that the black ink is coming up on there. And since it's going to be permanent, I don't remember if I decided to go around those. I think I did with black ink. So I'm almost done with the green. Stitch over. So in actuality, you can sew faster than an embroidery machine with a regular machine, which means you can embroider an entire project faster than an embroidery machine can sew. Once you get the hang of this, you're kind of like the, the person on the street. I sat too long in one spot, by the way, and I shredded my thread. So it's kind of a weird thing. It looks like cats in the cradle from when I was a little girl with strings. Somehow like all this like naughty behavior occurs. So sometimes you can get lucky and cut just the right thread and it'll stay connected. I did not get lucky. But then you have, I have shredding here. And that was because I sat too long and I snipped the thread a little bit. Which if I can do it, you can do it. So these will happen. And you just go, it's okay. No big deal. It's just you get on a roll and it, it becomes so fun. And you're like, I don't want to stop, darn thread. <laughs> Your Janome 9400 will taper on both sides. They brought it back. Oh, thank God. Maybe a reason to get a new machine. The last machine that Janome had made that tapered on both sides was the 6000. So if they brought that back, that's awesome. What am I doing? I'm unthreading my needle each time. All right. I got to pay attention. I, I'm reading as I'm pulling it. Pulled it wrong. Magnifying glasses don't always help me see. Your dog's been watching, Amy. <laughs> well, that sheds a whole nother light on this show. If I'm entertaining your pets while you're out, well, then I should sew all day long. Remember, I don't have to bring the bottom thread up because I never cut it. And the green is supposed to be between the yellow and the blue right here. It's a, sh it's a blending. Shading is another word for it. I don't need a lot of thread because I brought them together. I brought yellow into the blue. Not a lot, but... And so this is just filling in the little gaps in between. You don't want too much of this in here. And I'm kind of reminding myself because it's been so long since I did the other bottom wing. Have a little space there. A good reason to use speed control is so the machine doesn't go like that all of a sudden scare you when you're learning. Nope, I was going to use green just to be lazy, but I'm not because I have the other yellow one. Or it's like an orange, orangey yellow. And I think that'll be really pretty. Are you guys feeling more confident? Are you guys ready to do this? Thumbs up if you are, and know that if you don't have the hoops, 15% coupon till midnight Mountain Standard Time. And right now it is 445, and it is March 4th, 2021, because I'm in Arizona. Our time never changes. Every Thursday I go live at 2 for this show, Fabrically Speaking Live. So when you guys spring forward, I won't. If you ever wonder what time it is in Arizona, you can Google what time is it in Arizona and it'll tell you. I try to remind you every weekend today, I didn't get to let the school know that I was going live, but you guys should be set up with your notifications and be reminded without me having to remind you each week. It's like if I get the newsletter out, I sometimes can't notify the school 
and vice versa. Eventually, I will have another person to help with those things so we can spread out the knowledge all the way across and help you guys not miss anything. You can embroider on socks with this as well. You can put baby socks down there. I have done that in case that's why you brought up socks. I can't remember. But when you sew on socks, you'll use the cover up so that it lifts up above the surface of the knit material. You can do the same thing on sweaters as well. Although sometimes it would be better to embroider, create a patch and then sew it onto a sweater because it's just hard on the fiber to have so many stitches. And another reason to absolutely use the colors of our cover up. All right, I think, I wonder, am I gonna get it done before the five o'clock hour in my time? I doubt it. We'll see. Zoom, zoom. Lower the foot. Outline. I like to outline little spots like this. Oh yeah, I'm so glad I used this color. I should have cut that thread, but I'm enjoying watching the color lay down. And since I'm not moving far, it didn't distract me too much. But you should do, you should be cutting it. Hopping over, going this direction apparently. Got little circles. I'm using just the straight stitch. In other words, I'm not moving in a zigzag motion. I just chose that. And I'm choosing to move my stitches or to have the stitch direction go sideways. So instead of up and down, I'm moving sideways, which will cause them to appear as if in a different height because the shadows cast on the stitch direction. That has a lot to do with how your stitches end up looking. Now I'm gonna walk over here. And we're on one of the bigger circles. And I'm gonna just keep going around to keep it flatter. Just think of this as all of your, when you do quilting, that's like rehearsing for doing, what are they called? Pebbles. I could just hop over. And then stitch. And we wrote, and we wrote with black marker, so that black. I keep inventing new words today. The black thread doesn't have to be completely filled in because that black color will hide any gaps that would be in there. Otherwise, I would have had to cover up all that white T-shirt, covering up complete opposite contrasting colors on any garment makes it much more challenging. So something just went wonky with my thread. I don't know if I'm going to get away with it. I think I did. So see how I'm going around? Pretend it's a pebble on a quilt and I'm making pebbles get smaller and smaller and the feed dogs are banging against the back of this. And it's not really affecting my vision anything not to hear that noise it makes when the feed dogs are lowered. Stitching over because we're going to cover that with black thread. It's called cheating. Now this because it's the body needs to be big and fluffy. But if I do a giant stitch like this, it's more vulnerable. So we'll go halfway through and halfway. So big stitches. And then after we go over it again with a big giant stitch and nobody can tell that you have little stitches beneath it or smaller stitches beneath it. And when it's done, it's gonna look really rounded. Okay, so this half two, slowing the machine way down, going halfway with my stitches. And now it looks kind of jagged. Now I'm going to smooth it out by big giant stitches going all the way across, covering up the shadow 
of where those two stitches come together and nobody can tell and then people will be going, so impressed and then i go all the way around by the way people always go wow how'd you get that to look like that that's how because we have so much control with the octahoops around and again halfway in between for strength then all the way across for beauty and then we go all the way around so the thread won't break hop to the next one notice I'm keeping the hoop going up and down especially on the big stitches like this otherwise I get dizzy I start swaying my body side to side I decided to make that one bigger so it's really small and there's gonna be so much black on this It'd be nice to have the pop of color slow way down make a big stitch So over here we are. And what did I do on the other side? I drew through. So we drew through. Zoom zoom. Next one. And I was doing these like sideways below each one. This side has more spots. So over. And make it big. So over and big. Can't look at the screen right now, you guys. My eyes are on the color, not the needle. That's why I'm able to go so fast. If you look at the needle, you'll just get dizzy. Your eyes will burn. And you won't actually ever be able to focus on a needle moving that fast. It'll only be an illusion to you. Because if your needle is moving that fast up and down, all you're really seeing is a blurred line of the fact that the needle is going up and down. So try not to look at the needle. Try to look where you're going. And I say that all the time. Look where you're going, not where you're at. So now we're back to the graduating circles getting smaller as I go around. Come around. And now the fabric is pulling on this side of the machine. And I was starting to strain. My fingers were starting to get sore from pulling the weight of the sweatshirt because I didn't want to stop. Because you may end up like me and feel like a two-year-old. I don't want to stop coloring. How dare anything slow down my speed? I'm having fun. And that's how sewing is supposed to be. It's supposed to be fun. You can take any embroidery design, any fabric that has a design, color over it. The world is your art palette now. Now I'm ready to the black. So I'm going to switch bobbin because we want to have a black bobbin when we're using black thread. So it's okay to cut with the scissors and it cuts my bobbin thread too. Makes it easier to exit. Be very careful because there's no foot to protect the needle. So that's why I'm going slowly and tucking everything under so I don't scrape the tip of that needle. Because if you scrape the tip of the needle, you need to toss it. And that's what the back looks like. These are the loose stitches, deliberately done loose so I can take them out. But see how beautiful that stitch is? And the white is lingerie, and it kind of blends in. Because the lingerie is so thin, there's less thread underneath, and it's better for the fabric to do that. Putting it aside, switching to my black lingerie bobbin. That's not it. Sorry, I don't want you to have to see my shoulder. Hello, everybody. Did I have a bobbin of black thread? I do. I can always tell the look and the feel of lingerie thread. It used to be called Sobob. And we had a company called Sewart International 
winding our thread for us. The foot is not down. I mean, the foot is down, which is why my whole thread dispenser is pulling as I try to pull the thread out because the tension discs are holding the thread. So we raise the foot and then you can pull it out. Did you get caught in there? It's like I'm fishing for something. I have removed the thread from the needle, which you should do before pulling the thread out. So it doesn't get caught on the eye of the needle and then shred and then some of the shreddings end up in your tension. If you ever lose tension and no matter how hard you pull on the thread or lower the foot, it still has no tension. Take a piece of fabric, make sure you're not on the edge of the fabric because you don't want to drop any frayed pieces into your tension and you can just drag the thread, the fabric through your tension. And when you do that, don't go up and down, go down and it'll pull out any threads that may be caught inside your tension. Sometimes people would bring a sewing machine in for repair and that was the only thing that was wrong. There was like a thread stuck in their tension. So now we're on the black thread. This is the thread dispenser once again. Well, it's sitting on something. It's all wobbly. I can't wait to clean my area this weekend. I'm gonna look and see if any of you have any questions. If you have a question, type it right now because I'm about to be able to do that. Once the black is done, I'm going to say goodbye until next Thursday. Unless I decide to pop up again with another live episode of anything, which is why you wanna have your notifications turned on. And if you don't know, I went live yesterday. I did. I decided to show what I, used to do at shows, because a lot of people would say, I never got to see you at a show. And so I went, you know what? I can do it now that I have cameras all switching. I can actually mimic what I did at a show. And you guys chatting kind of is like people talking at a show. So let's see here. As soon as you get your brace off your broken knee. Oh, you poor thing. I've had issues with my knee for a few years and I'm finally feeling good. So exciting. You want me to re-go re over the stabilizers? All right. <sighs> you always can fast forward and rewind this video, but I understand because it's gonna be three hours long or a little more because we're one minute to three hours. On the bottom of the shirt, we use the hold light which is the hummingbird stabilizer that stops the shirt from stretching. And it also prevents loops of terry cloth towels and minky from becoming pulled apart when you remove the fabric from the stick and tear. So you're supporting the shirt first with the stabilizer on the back, at least one inch wider than the perimeter of the embroidery that you're gonna sew. Then, on the top, we have our cover up and you can glue that down with our liquid base glue so that it doesn't lift up when we embroider. And that liquid base will wash away whenever you wash the garment. On top of that, the colored stabilizer is once again, the same stabilizer that I used on the back. And I traced it using the Caterpillar light tablet the Caterpillar light tablet pattern or the pattern for this butterfly is right under this pad. And I unplugged the light. So you can just rewatch to see how it lights up. If you've seen me ever use the Caterpillar light tablet, you know it lights up. So my butterfly is underneath the pad. So I was able to just draw right on this stabilizer after taping it to the board using a painter's tape type of paint. And then you embroider. After doing a stay stitch or a running stitch all the way around the design before you start sewing, just to make sure that if any areas of the stabilizer tries to lift up, that it is held in place so your fabric doesn't give in and start getting puckery. That's it. I think I covered it all. And cover up does come in colors as well, but what I used today was a clear. And clear is our most popular. 
but it doesn't block all color. So if you have if you have like a black hat and you're gonna sew a white thread, you should use white cover up because it's just gonna take you so much longer to cover that up. I'm going to have a kit, yes, for the thread. So you guys will be able to just order what I did today. That's the whole point of the new Creative Feet site. But I believe I can also sell inside of my school and I'm learning how to do that. We have a section of creativefeet.com right now called class kits, and that will start to build. So you'll be able to look for the class and then just order the kit and everything I used in that. Well, you'll see what is available in that kit because we wouldn't throw in a cutter pillar because you probably already have it, but it'll be like the threads. I have so many things coming. I can't wait. So exciting. I came up with something the other day. And I want to tell you about it so bad, but I can't. You're going to love it. Be a great gift for another sewer. And also just, you're going to like, you're going to want to have it. Okay, so back to this. Now I'm going to sew the black. So while I'm doing this, if you can think of anything that you want me to answer between now and when I'm done embroidering the black, hurry, hurry, because I'm going to end and go have dinner. Because it's five o'clock my time. I'm starting to not know days from nights anymore. Here we go. I have that song in my head. I'm so excited because it's almost done and it's looking so pretty. So this actually has two layers of the whole light on top because if, oops, I almost didn't bring that bobbin thread up. I mean, you need to. I have two layers of hold light on top because when you ink with markers, if you use markers that aren't Sharpie, they could get on your iron. And maybe two layers of hold light is, is really good because this is really performing well, no matter how wide my zigzag width is going. All right, tempted to use a zigzag so it goes faster. However, it really is cool to have some of these bumps really stick out. And the only way they can is if you don't build everything up. The butterfly is a pattern that you'll be able to print right out from the school. I'll add it before I go to dinner. You can use any colors of thread that you like in, in uh, substitution. But if you're going to use different colors, I recommend using those color markers so you don't lose track. The whole point of the colors is to make it mindless. It's kind of like paint by numbers, but there's no numbers. You just match the color. Your brain loves that, the simplicity of it, not having to chart something out. It's a nice, clean, beautiful process that gives you a professional look, even though you're doing free motion embroidery. Also been called thread painting over the years. Because in essence, we're painting with the medium thread. So I'm going to go ahead and do my separations. And that's where I go between these colors. The road, I called it before. And I'm slowing down my machine because I don't want to mess up. I don't want to all of a sudden jump over and have to cut my thread. Make sure you're relaxed, your hands supported by the table, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Go slow. You can even run your machine slower when you do this. And notice I'm going about a quarter inch up and down, quarter inch up and down. I'm not trying to go all the way down and all the way back. That's harder. Sorry for the dog barking. Apparently our FedEx shipment is here. And now the whole world knows it. I think more than anything, he would like to open the door because he brings biscuits sometimes. And sometimes he'll throw the ball a little bit. Smart driver. Do you see it coming to life? My left hand is doing something bad. I'm going to show you. 
first off, I'm not sitting in front of my machine, which is bad for me and bad for you. And I'm doing it because the microphone's here and that camera would be getting my head if I were sitting in the correct position. But this, this is never, never a good idea. This is what I call hyperextending your hand. If you do that for a long period of time, you'll start to cramp. The tendons and muscles will start to get tight. You'll start to get sore. And it, it can ultimately lead to joint damage. So we don't want to do that. We just want to make sure you're more comfortable. I might need to lower myself. Oh, I do. However, then you can't see me over the machine because I get too short. But we're almost to the end, so I'm going to make sure I'm really comfortable. And now try to pay attention because it's been almost three hours, so my brain's a little tired. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? I just might have to wear this shirt. Can't wait to see what you guys do. Promise me that you guys will try this. Promise right now. Give me a heart if you're promising to me that you're going to do this, that you're not going to be a chicken and put this off for another year. Promise. So let's see, I'm going to, I want to do the body, but... And because I am using a shorter stitch length, and the stitch length is governed by me moving my fingers, not the stitch length style. In other words, I ran the machine faster on the black than I did on this. And that's why this is raised up above the black. And that dimension, that change in elevation makes things look so cool. It's always easier to go up and down to see that you're filling in. Black over black is harder to see. But isn't it nice to know that that black ink is going to stay there? You can actually see the shine of the whole light shining through the stitches. So if you see a lot of shine, then you know you haven't covered it. So that's one way to know you've done it. You're covered well enough. And the whole light will stay in the embroidery forever. So what you see when you're finished is what will be after washings, as long as you pre-washed the garment, because this is polyester thread and it won't shrink either. And our stick and tear is polyester and it doesn't shrink either. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed, I'm almost, oops, I went out, but only one stitch, so I'll have to remove that. And it's not a good idea to try to go cover it up with stitching because you have two sides and you won't remember to do it over there. So we'll just make sure we can, we do a nice clean job from now on. And continue. I would sing for you, but I'm too tired. But it's not a bad idea to sing while you're doing this because you'll not think so much about what you're doing. Maybe not when you're doing the fine work. You do want to pay attention when you're doing that. You can see I did that again. Got that weird thing going on where it unthreaded the needle, shredding up here. So it happens to me too. But what is that, twice? Not too bad. Would have happened a lot more if I weren't using my octa -hoops because I'm sitting there too long, by the way. I can't see well enough because my light is off so that you guys can see. So it's really hard for me to tell if I'm covering because the black is so black. It would have probably been wiser to do gray so I can see the black over that. So, hey, you guys got that opportunity. You could still use a gray marker instead of black. It just almost pulled that thread right back out again. Why did it do that? I don't know. I'm going to use bigger stitches, which means I'm moving my hands further.
the speed of the machine. So you can go really slow if you want to mimic that. So just a little bit more fluff on the stitch. What did I do? Sometimes that will happen. And it's the bobbin because it's fluffy on top. Remember that rule? I got actually to thread. I got to pull those out. I'm getting tired. Bummer. So when the thread broke and got shredded, I should have re-threaded is what happened. Because see, there you go. There's bird's nest. In case you're wondering what it looks like. Isn't that attractive? You've got to get that out. You can't sew over it. It's not a fun process, <laughs> but it's worse if you go too long. So if your thread shreds, make sure you re-thread because you can remove the thread from the tension disc or the machine kind of does it. It's one of those moments when you go, what the heck? I know I've done everything right. And the machine goes, ha ha, I undid the thread. You just couldn't see because it's inside. I know out of your view. There, all those knotty stitches are gone. Rethread both needle and bobbin just to make sure. See how I put my finger down when I thread? And that, make, that makes sure that it gets in the tension. And this is nylon, so I'm not going to cut it with a cutter because it can come out and then cause loops on the top. And that could very well be what happened. That something made the bobbin thread stretch and made it come out. Bye, Susan. You probably left before I saw it. Time are we on? 5.14. Nope, oh, I meant to do my needle down. <laughs> Can't thread the needle twice. Well, you can, but not with the same thread. That's another lesson for another day. It's a pretty cool one, though. All right, should I just stop? You guys got kind of, no, you don't have the whole lesson until you take it off, right? Foot down and begin again. Oh, got to bring the bottom thread up. <laughs> Hold on to it for the first couple of stitches. Just like that. Finger down on it. Don't hold on to it like a handlebar. So a few stitches off to the side and then cut it close. Now that area has been weakened because it already had needle strikes in it. So if there were going to be an issue, this is where it would be. So I'm running the machine slow. And I'm trying to keep my stitch direction going the same direction as the, the big part of the wing. And it's getting caught again. What is that? Is there something wrong with this little thread? I don't know. Sometimes the spools aren't wound correctly. And this is not, this black is not our polyfast. It's a thread that I had on a stand. So if it is, if I do that, if this continues, I'm, I gotta go get a spool of polyfast. See, it's doing it again. No. It's almost every week that I go, I kind of feel like stopping. Oh, disappointing. You've already seen how to fix it. And I probably should just put another piece of stick and tear under there to help it. I'm going to skip that area now. 
and just continue, but make sure my machine, I'm gonna change spools of thread and get the poly fast. Not sure what's going on with this spool, but definitely feels different than the poly fast. I'll be right back because I gotta, gotta get a brand new one, I think. I wonder if I have one in there. Let's see. Oh, God, just hit a cord. Hopefully the camera's still on. Nope, they just got disconnected. I know, Chase, you think I'm done, but I'm not. I can't go get a spool of thread. I'm sorry, honey. No, nope, mommy's not done. Doing your happy Sorry about that, you guys. It was the last thing I had to do this morning before I went live. And clearly, there's a cord that's causing other cords to become loose from the cameras. I'll be quiet for a minute while I restart this camera. The feeling of this thread is like night and day compared to the other one. It feels really smooth in my fingers and the other one was rough. So it pays to get the good thread real nice and smooth on your fingers when you run your fingers across it. If it's smooth and you don't feel lots of highs and lows or roughness, your machine will also enjoy it more. And frequently black was like a dye lot didn't, didn't turn out right and they dye it again. People tend to have more trouble with black, red, and orange colors. So if you do, now you know you're not alone. It has to do with how they're dyed. Things have gotten so much better over the years. But that spool may be several years old. I mean, polyester doesn't age but polyester has gotten better. So if you have an old spool of polyester, it may not be that it aged, but rather it was just not as good as they make it now. Another thing I should consider is that I might have damaged the needle and that could also cause it. I know some of you are like, this is great. She's having a problem. I get to see how she's fixing it. And then there's the people that come up later that don't know me. And they'll be like, this woman was not ready. She should have edited the video. Glasses. So this is my posture. Also a little bit so you can see the cam or the body posture and see that I'm not cheating. That, well, I don't know why I said that. Well, it's, it's working. What do you know? And I didn't like any of my stitches on the black, so I should have stopped sooner. This is 
just me going, I want to go to dinner. So run the machine slow when you're doing the black because this is detail. So sharp contrast to the white, it'll show more than a, a light yellow. Which is why I saved it for last. But maybe you'll be more rested when you start and you should start with the hardest first. No, I think you should start with the lightest so you can practice and you'll get better as you go. So you can see that my elbows are down and I, I would be even more comfortable, like I said, if I'm not trying to keep this camera in view. So I'm, I'm actually beside my machine and I should be in front of it. But then what would you see of me? Not that you need to see me. You really need to see the sewing machine up close. Does that look blurry? You can see the turtle better. Oh gosh, if I move the machine, the cameras might go out of focus, forget it. Okay. Up and down, nice and slow. Round the yellows. This would be good with music. What a different a th difference a thread makes. It is kind of getting bumpy in there and definitely use our liquid base glue to hold that cover up down. Under there, this is an area that was just lifted to begin with. So that's why I'm struggling a little bit. So I'm, I should have gone around one time all the way around with the black. So if you're watching still, that's what you should do. Go all the way around the black at least once with a straight stitch before you go further. And that will lock. It, it, it does this, but closer. So it stabilizes and stops it from moving. You don't have to fill in your first initial time. You can always do that later. So I'm getting my fingers close because I have all that thread already built up. And it wasn't laying flat to begin with, but everywhere else it is. So this is just a trouble spot for me. I thought I was gonna get away with it, but this is life. And part of these stitches were zigzag stitches, which makes the thread carry more weight on the overall design. I'm like, I think I might want the black body part to stick up too. Maybe not. I can always change my mind. You can never go back to lower, but you can always make the lower stitches fluffier. I just go in like this after doing that zigzag motion. That little fluff is good, but having the yellow bumps is kind of cool. So are any of you sitting on your couch knitting or hand quilting? I'm kind of picturing you guys lounging as I work. What a difference this thread is. Some threads can be too shiny, too slippery, by the way. I've had trouble with some of the most expensive threads out there because they're they're too slippery. They run too fast through the tension. Is Chase playing with you and you're not ready for it? Tinkerbell's coming to tell on Chase. It's only a matter of time before they gang up on me and try to get me to stop. They really thought I was done when I went to get the thread. I feel bad. So now I'm going around his eyeballs. 
feeling good, excited because it looks so good. We do see it up close with the cell phone camera. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way around the outside for the rest before I sew it because I can see it is lifting. And that's not unusual after all this time that I've been stitching on it. So this is what I meant when I said go all the way around. So just on the outside. And you can use short stitch length there. In other words, move your hand slow. You're perforating both of these stabilizers so that they'll tear easily when we're done. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. I'm starting to feel like I'm carrying the weight of this sweatshirt or t-shirt because it was getting stuck. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Cutting through both the cover-up and the whole light by doing this outline stitch. So you either do it before or you do it after. Zoom, zoom. I don't know if the camera can keep up. I think sometimes the microphone makes the camera. <laughs> You're gonna fall asleep, Denise. My voice puts people to sleep. I have emails frequently where they go, you put me to sleep. I tried to stay awake, but you put me to sleep. I used to fall asleep at my machine doing machine embroidery when I was younger. And you used to have to get really close with your nose. And I would get my machine. My machine would bump me in the head with the take-up lever. And I had bruises all over my forehead. But I remember waking up the next morning with my head on the machine. My head was dented. <laughs> That's how addicted I was to this. I was like, what, 17 years old when that happened. Didn't invent my first product till I was 19. In the meantime, I was like, you guys just super excited about everything I was learning. I started teaching the embroidery because my mom encouraged me to take a class to become certified in it. And then she kind of forced me to start teaching she actually kind of yelled at me. One of the few times my mother raised her voice to me. Because I was like, I'm scared to go in there and teach. Because I was 19 or 18. And everyone in the room was our age now. And uh, she goes, does anybody in there know more about this sewing machine than you? And I go, no. She goes, get in there and teach. Good mother. That was the beginning of my future, unknowingly. Are you guys having fun? Anybody doing anything? You guys are not chatting very much. Thank you for hanging out this long. I can see that I need to add more green. And that's a bummer because I want to teach you how to take this off. And the only way to do that is to finish every color. Pays to have a light on when you sew. The light is hitting it better where I'm sitting right now. So that's why you can see that I'm doing a better job. I don't know if you noticed I wasn't doing as good a job before. I'm, I'm more comfortable because I lowered my chair. So you can see it's kind of lifting. So I'm pushed down, try to get it reconnected with this stick and tear beneath. If this makes you nervous with my finger there, just know that I'm not going to keep it there. <laughs> just kind of pushing it down. This is where you would be at risk of breaking a needle if it lifts up too much. If this is if this happens to you, you can put a foot on. My fingers are very experienced at being close to needles and not sewing through them. I know not to look at my fingers while I sew. And as I said, use our liquid-based glue to glue down the cover-up to the fabric before you apply the whole light over it. And that won't happen to you. It 
didn't think about it until after it was already stuck. Or until it was already fused. This would be faster with a zigzag stitch for sure. But I can't change the look now. Oh, it's so pretty. I wonder how many people are lurking. And there's a way to find out, but I haven't figured it out yet. So a presser foot would stop me from feeling the need to put my finger there. However, it would all block my view. And once I get that outline, now it's all held down. Now I can go back and not put my fingers like this. It's just that the cover-up does not have adhesive on it to hold it down. And all this time I've been sewing through a sticker without any gumming of my needle. Live, so you know that I'm not getting a sticky needle. Going live definitely helps you to see that we're truthful in what we offer. The machine I'm using is the Baby Lock Crescendo, if any of you are wondering. It is not an embroidery machine. It's a regular sewing machine. I'm using a straight stitch and my tension is reduced from four to three which is the equivalent on any machine from one number less than what you normally would sew. I have nylon lingerie thread in my bobbin. I'm almost done, right? How many more minutes do I have? 5.34, oh my goodness, here we go, another three hours. Have any of you got an embroidery machine? How long would it take your, your machine to sew out a butterfly this big? And this is five inches wide by about four inches long. How many stitches? How long would it take you to get the embroidery design in your machine, the fabrics ready, and stitch it all out? So you compare that to this. I think a couple times I had to leave the room. It's the actual sewing time. I don't know what it is. Because I'm not done yet. The left hand is not steering. My right hand is, I'm right handed, that's why. If you're left handed, you'd hold the handle on the other side. You would be going like this with your handle over here and your right hand would be stabilizing the fabric. So it's an ambidextrous thing. Yes, lingerie thread, not laundry. <laughs> lingerie. I think I'm gonna go back in with a slow movement and make this bigger, I don't like it. I prefer it to be bigger. That looks more refined. Means I gotta go around this, the round things. They're not circles, they're filled in. The dots, the polka dots, the butterfly dots. Oh, that looks better. So slow movement, slow running machine, faster moving hands. You can put your speed control down really low so that you don't have risk of all of a sudden speeding up. Yeah, that's cleaning it up. Looks better. 
hear the plucking? That's the sound of, you got too much thread here. Alert, alert. You're going to break that needle if you keep doing that. Oopsie. Kind of sound like an embroidery machine though, don't I? Sometimes the machine goes slow, like that. And then sometimes it speeds way up. That's the longest I've been quiet on a live video yet. Right, you guys? <laughs> I don't have any water in here right now. I ran out, so I gave my voice a moment to be quiet. And if I were to play music and not have my license music that I pay for, YouTube would like stop my video or Facebook. So I would give you some music to listen to if I had had five minutes more time. Oops, another stitch to clean up. This part will really put you to sleep because it's a slow moving movement. The lighting definitely got better because I couldn't see well enough to do this earlier to actually produce a zigzag motion. I did one video on, <laughs> I have this dragonfly design, which I plan to actually offer you guys. It's a pattern that I did. We're going to make it into a bag and you're going to embroider the top and you can watch it, the dragonfly embroidery. I'll refilm it. But the one that I created has this like uh, very spiritual sounding music and people have commented. One of the comments was, I don't even sew, but I could not turn this off. It made me so relaxed and there's something magical about it. It's hypnotizing. But it is funny because a lot of people that watched it do not sew at all. I should have done a smaller butterfly. We'd be done already. Tonight I'm going into Prescott. I'm going downtown for dinner. Starting to think about dinner. See how I go really kind of fast and then I go slow with a bigger stitch over. Done with one half the butterfly. I gotta put some bigger running stitches down here. The running stitch is going straight and it's bigger. That's in my mind, that's what a running stitch is. If it's something else on an embroidery machine, feel free to put it in the chat. If any of you are still awake, if I didn't embroider you guys to sleep, I'm gonna go ahead and do this antennae while I have it in front of me. Got 
definitely want to go slow here. Just a straight stitch. Wearing my glasses the whole time so I can see. Switching to a different hole on the top of the frame. Always steering with your fingers. Not using this with your hand down. Elbows down, resting on the table around the machine. Always cut your tails. <laughs> Which clearly, I have not cut it in a while. Okay, back to the antennae. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Don't go fast. This is a really small area. Did I see that okay? I'm thinking about putting the camera on the other side. I'll try it out next week. See if you can get a better angle on the needle from another perspective. Unless you guys think this is perfect. I think it's slightly off. And I have to sit diagonally, so. I think it'd be better for both of us. The last wing. Yay. I'm having fun, though. I really don't want to stop, but I'm getting hungry. Faster hands than the machine is running. Lays more thread down. You don't have to go so long. You don't have to go such so far. You could do, do that in smaller movements. Sometimes I can do it really far and sometimes I can't. I'm actually moving at a rate of about a quarter inch to each stitch. I'm sure it's difficult to see that from the camera. Maybe less than a quarter inch for each stitch. So the machine is running slow and my hand or fingers on this little peg are moving the fabric at a pace of about four millimeters, maybe five millimeters. So five millimeters of thread is being laid down with every stitch. Even though the machine is running slow, I'm actually getting more stitches down than if I sped up the machine. It's relaxing. Less likely to make a, a mistake. Come back over here. Make sure you finish your areas. Because when you're done with one color, you're going to want to rip this off and check it out. And I can see the shine between the threads to see that I didn't get everything. Come up the spacing, going forward and back. So I create a thick line in between. Because this part was sewn with a zigzag stitch and that's why it sticks up higher. Feed dogs being up starting to bug me. I'm starting to lose it. Three hours, 46 minutes. Oh boy, should have done a smaller butterfly. The only way to get good at something is to do it and do it often. And I know some of you will worry about wasting your tools, your supplies, wasting thread on something you don't end up liking. So you might be tempted to use low quality thread, but you'll have a bad experience and you may never advance simply because 
you didn't put the investment into a better quality and you saw what happened when I didn't have a good quality black thread in. I know that we don't carry products that aren't really good because I have to face you guys. It's different than some companies where they just sell you something based on price. You never have to see them. And then you usually, you guys blame yourselves when something goes wrong. I feel bad when, when someone does that, when they, they think it's their fault something happened when it really was something else, like the thread or the wrong needle. If I were embroidering and you guys weren't watching and I didn't promise I'd finish, I would have stopped and rested. Yeah, I'm going to definitely do that, Karen. I'm changing my camera because I also saw some footage that I did before and the camera was on the other side and it was a better perspective. It's so like your brains will visualize better from as if your nose is in front of the machine. And I think Tinkerbell would like it as well, to not have cords right near her sleeping area. Since you guys are all used to seeing cameras in sets now, it's not that big a deal. You may not even have been noticing that you can see the camera lately, because my set is full of stuff. The last little stretch. It's really quite pretty. I'm not really fond of white t-shirts though, so I'm probably gonna take my ink and ink this shirt. If I do, I will film it so you guys can see. Maybe I'll do that in the next VIP. So we have a VIP group inside Create with Claire Rowley and I have to give them special things. If any of the VIP members are in here, do you want me to show you me inking this shirt to make it blend better with this dramatic embroidery on it? If you do, give me a thumbs up. You can also give me a message inside of the school, inside of the VIP group. Okay, slow down, do big stitches. This is this, the butterfly that had some issues. Just so slight though. I'm going to round it off. Slow down. Big stitches. That's how you smooth something out. Almost done. Almost done. It's that shine that I'm seeing that's helping me, as I mentioned before. Now I'm going to clean this mess up over here, try to get some of this off. I couldn't get all the bobbin threads up because it was such a mess. So this is something you should have done though, okay? I am experienced, so I'm not as afraid of what may happen here, which could be broken needles because that's a lot of thickness of thread but I'm gonna to try to clean it up. Just so you guys can see, once you get better, that you can get away with doing stuff like this. It doesn't seem like it's fixable without removing all the thread. <laughs> come on, Kimmy, you wanna come off? Okay, and just as before, I'm gonna do bigger stitches to kind of cover up, because this is already heavy. And I wasn't doing the bigger stitches at this point. And if I don't do them now, it, this part of the wing will look so different. This is a lot of thread. But I'm still not hearing the plucking and that plucking is that warning sign. 
am I going to be able to cover it up? And this was the fault of a bad spool of thread for any of you who are watching on the replay or coming in late right now. This spool of thread was just not sewing right no matter what I did. And the thread that I'm using now is Polyfast, available at creativefeet.com. It's working. I'm getting away with it. The back of the shirt is not going to look pretty on the spot, but people aren't supposed to look inside your shirt. Okay, this is my opportunity to check the entire butterfly for any black areas that I need to clean up or fill fully. I can see that I didn't, I was a little stressed out right here. So clean this up. And the bottom of the wing like this, this cute little shape that I will, of the viewer will be focused here. Your eye goes towards interesting shapes that are different than the overall image that you're looking at. So these, like the antennae, are areas where you want to take your time so that you can do a really good job. I think I can do a better job on the other bottom. And then I'm going to look for green because... I think there was a spot that wasn't good, or I didn't like it enough. This is also another opportunity to go all the way around one more time to make sure that it tears clean away. Otherwise, you'll be using tweezers and cleaning it after. That's it for the black. Yeah, this is where I need to add more green. And then I'm going to tear it off. And sh we're going to expose it and show you how to remove everything. Because you need to learn that as well. Once again, lingerie thread in the bobbin. It's, isn't it a pretty thread? It's very, it's translucent is what it's called. So it reflects the color it's next to. And it's great for lingerie. It's also great for in the bobbin for machine embroidery, monogramming, applique, decorative stitches, and pin tucking, and including and also elastic. It is stronger. If you're going to make t shirt quilts, you want lingerie thread in the bobbin. And if you're going to piece t shirts or stretch material, this is the thread to use for piecing. If you're going to make a quilt for a child who's going to jump on the bed, this would be a good thread because they can jump up and down and the thread is stretching and come, it comes back to its original shape. It's called memory nylon was known as memory yarn. If any of you remember back when we had nylons before they called them pantyhose, they called them nylons and they used to sag at the ankle and then they came up with memory yarn and they advertised it as your pantyhose will no longer sag at the ankle. And that's the nylon thread in a different type of fiber that you're seeing here, but the same polymer or chemical breakdown. Okay, I'm looking for the green and then we'll be done. Have to rip things apart. That sounds bad. <laughs> it's really not violent, but everything just comes apart. And then you have a beautiful embroidery that looks as though a professional machine did it and not. Well, if you ever join the VIP, here's the thing. As the VIP grows, everything's still in there. So if you jump into the VIP group a few months from now, you can go in there and go and see how much information you can gather. And then if you can't afford it for another month, then you can cancel your VIP, pop in and out when you can afford it. 
I go live on the third Saturday of each month for that's a guarantee. And that's the, you get to do whatever, or you don't get to do whatever you want with me, but you get to make me sew whatever you want with a reasonable amount of time. In other words, I can't make a whole quilt for you. However, you better be ready with your questions or I'll do whatever I want for that hour. And if you don't have questions, it may only last an hour. If you have questions, I'll probably go up to three hours on that Saturday. All right, where is that? There it is. Just went away from it. It's just a little bit. Straight stitch, lower the foot. And I should be wearing my glasses. And I'm not bringing my bobbin thread up because I'm only up to sew a little bit, but I should have. Another time I'm being naughty. I'm not showing you. <laughs> Wrong camera. I was worried about putting too much green down and covering the yellow, but this part of the wing doesn't have yellow. <laughs> so this is what should have been on the top. I should have been making sure it's full up there. And once you, you always want to like make sure that the middle is done before you start building the back, at least stitch down. So I'm going to have a carryover stitch. Because I didn't do this one clean either. And all this time, the feed dog's been up. They've been up for a while. I can feel them tapping on my finger. For those of you who have been told that you can't do free motion with feed dogs up, you've just witnessed it. And this isn't just two rows of feed dogs. This is a seven millimeter wide zigzag machine. So it has more rows of feed dogs than older machines. I think I'm gonna put a little more over there too. Now that was risky. I should have lifted the foot as I moved over because the tension could have pulled on the needle and bent it. This is me trying to hurry up now. I'm almost done. This is not when you should be getting careless either because you're almost done. You don't want to mess it up and then have to rip something out. It's, low it's like getting a ticket because you sped and you really didn't get there any faster. Okay, so we pull it out and now I'm going to cut all my carryovers. Try not to cut the stitches because that can make it come loose. Especially with the big stitches that I did where I move the hoop a large amount each stitch. And this is season nine. No, it's not. It's season two, episode nine of Fabrically Speaking Live. We go live every Thursday at two o'clock Mountain Standard Time. If this is your first time watching and you didn't get to catch it live and you'd like to, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get notifications when I go live. It asks you what kind of notifications you want and just go all and then you won't miss anything. And you can also join my online school, Create with Claire Rowley. I'm gonna go ahead now and remove this safety pin. And this was holding, see how this loop was holding the shirt without pinning through the shirt. So I didn't damage the shirt and I didn't have to worry about it slipping underneath my hoop. And this is one of the quiltlets that we use for quilting as well. Now the, the goal is always to not waste the stick and tear that's attached to the back. And we need to remove the, the what's the stitch called you guys? <laughs> What is it called? I can't remember. The running stitch. Before we try to remove the stabilizer, get the handle and put it away. So we're going to grab and cut our needle thread. Always needle thread first. Let's see how I'm able to pull that 
pull these loops out. Sorry about how noisy that is. I was going to just show you a little bit. I have to show it all because I have to remove it. You can use a seam ripper as well and, and cut like every inch. It's another way of doing it. These scissors are so great. So why this is so loose is because I had the tension loose. I don't know if I said that. So I made the tension like two when I did this running stitch so that it would be loopy and easy to get my seam ripper or scissors underneath. And then when you go from behind and you grab your bobbin thread, if you can get a hold of it, I got to do it where I definitely moved it. Can't remember because it's upside down. So I get for trying to jump ahead. When this needle thread's all gone, the bobbin thread will just pull right out. Snip. The dogs want biscuits. They get cookies after I film, especially when they're this good. Tinkerbell didn't make me pick her up once. <laughs> Chase only barked once. It's been a good drama, doggy drama day. <laughs> I had to go back and stitch after on some of this and I didn't lower the tension. So those are harder to get out. You guys got your questions? Any questions? Now it's time to write them because as soon as I'm done pulling this out, I'm going to head out of here, go to dinner. After this show, I never want to cook. I just want someone to serve me. That's the bobbin thread coming out. Where are my tweezers? It's always better to use tweezers than your fingers. Doesn't get you sore. And these are the Appliquix scissors that are for people with physical challenges. So they're easier on your hands when you go to grab and pull. I'm not left-handed, so this is a little awkward. Nothing like, I, you know, I've never like ripped an entire project out with an audience live. Usually I'd say, go, go, go back to your seat. I'll let you know when I'm done. You guys can do something else, but you're not just staring at this, are you? You guys are doing something else. You're at home. Anyone have wine? Have coffee? Tea? I'm glad I can help you get through the shutdown boredom. It really is pretty. I'll make sure I give you the right color numbers and everything so you know how to make it the same. But don't expect that tonight. I need to go out and eat and sleep. But tomorrow I should be able to get it all done. So you at least know what colors to order. I know that we are having to do an order. Some colors, we just had a big run on colors. People are starting to tell people about it. I have spent a lot more for thread and not liked it. So it's really priced well. You can barely tell I had a mistake there or issue there. So this whole stretch here was done with short stitch length and the normal tension. 
so it's going to be harder to separate. I'm going to just try this, pull this off so you can kind of see. And I can take those threads out after because everything will come apart. So as I'm pulling, this is the cover up. You can see it's got an, a lot more body than the stick and rinse. <laughs> no, than the hold light. And you just pull toward and it just tears because we did that straight stitch all the way along the outside edge. Remember me mentioning everything will tear away better if you do a short stitch all the way around. Don't use your fingers, use the pliers or tweezers. Better for your fingers. Trying not to distort the stick and tear below it. I really should remove that first. So I'm gonna flip this over. You can see everything is, is solid. We've got our carryover stitches. You need to remove those before you separate it. There's where I had an issue with that lower quality thread. All right, now you lay the hoop down on a smooth surface. And I really gotta, if my, oh, I can switch to the above camera. We'll do that. <laughs> it's so funny how all of a sudden it just goes, I gotta show all the cameras. And it's not me, I promise. They got a transition issue with the app. As long as you don't mind having all, all of those cameras at the same time. Where is center? What do you think you guys, you're not pretty? So now we're gonna pull the shirt and start rolling it and try not to stretch it too much out of shape but you'll see it comes off the whole light see the shiny that's the whole light and we kind of pull everything to the center toward the embroidery and you can see the whole light is stuck to the stick and tear instead of the shirt so the shirt didn't have to suffer or it doesn't have to suffer through this process of becoming separated from the stick and tear. And the stick and tear is super strong. Sorry, someone was calling. Here we go. Just keep pulling in. And see how the hole is starting to form? Tearing clean away. Except for where my carrier or that stitch I did and I have to remove. I can do it after. And in between all these stitches, there is some stick and tear. But remember, the stick and tear is stuck to the whole light, not the shirt. So if this were minky or a terry cloth towel, that would not become distorted or, or damaged by pulling the adhesive off because the adhesive is stuck to the whole light, not the shirt. And then you continue supporting the shirt being on a flat surface and you can patch that. Now, if you can pull the whole light off and still have, and not have any of the stick and tear come off, this is when you want to do it like right away, because as it sits longer, but you can see the adhesive is separating. So this whole area where the whole light was is now not usable. So this would be a whole new hooping. But that was a big butterfly. That's why I say not to have 
Uh, I forgot what I was saying. Sorry, guys. It's the five or the six o'clock hour, and my brain skipped because my dog showed up. I knew she would eventually. Notice that the hoop, after removing the, the hoop, the stabilizer is still clean and ready to be used for quilting. And I always do like remove, if I am going to remove it, I remove it all right in that moment, not leave any little pieces because you can be lazy when, when you get excited about working on your next project. Should you ever leave it on there really, really long, there may be some adhesive that's on here and you can clean it off with Goo Gone. Soak it in the sink, use dish detergent as well. There we go, now it's ready for me to do quilting. Oh, I can't wait to do my quilt. There we go, all clean, no sticky feeling. Ready to quilt with it. So I'm not going to be able to remove that right now because that running stitch. Use tweezers to grab the stabilizer. Pull toward the embroidery. Not straight in, but at an angle, it tears better. Get in there. I want to have the ending. Ta da! All the Appliquick tools, the scissors, the rods for turning under fabric for patchwork applique, and these for removing the stabilizers and holding little pieces of applique pieces are much more comfortable than other designs of tweezers and designs of scissors. Any of you have the Appliquick products, you're actually watching me rip it all out. <laughs> You wait until I'm done. Are you guys in it to the end with me? If you can last through almost six hours yesterday, Lorinda, you can, you have the patience of a saint. I don't know if I'm going to have the patience to wait because I'm really hungry. But you can see the stabilizer's coming off. It's just that running stitch. That is my problem. <laughs> stretch too much, you'll stretch the shirt out. And you can always iron afterward to sure up or shrink back the fibers that you may have stretched out by overhandling it. Yep, this is the part where probably people are bailing. Nope, they're all still there. Okay. This camera's not in perfect focus anyway. So. I didn't know I had four cameras on that whole time. Oops. There you go. An embroidery done 100% by home sewing machine. Isn't it pretty? I hope you guys enjoyed learning this. Hanging out with me for this, our season two, episode nine of Fabrically Speaking Live. Wouldn't that be a nice present? And I may or may not ink the white fabric so it's not so white. I'll let you know.
remember, we still have six hours left of our 15% off coupon. Go through midnight Mountain Standard Time. You need to enter show 15 to receive 15% off your entire order at creativefeet.com. Yes, everybody have a wonderful weekend. I didn't get to announce the giveaway winner because I just didn't have a time to get that selected. Your dog started barking when my dogs bark, Sharon. <laughs> How funny. That's so funny. He's got real vocal range, that one. He scares living daylights out of me on a regular basis. Okay, so the lingerie thread is ours. It's our brand. It's got creative feet on the label. And it is unique to any other lingerie thread out there. It took a while for me to find my source after the gentleman passed away that was making it for us before. So we've got that all nailed down, and it's so exciting to have it back. You'll love it. Denise actually did fall asleep. You didn't almost fall asleep. <laughs> so yeah, the better days, the, the best thread for piecing and stitching your memory quilts together is the lingerie thread or a zigzag stitch instead of a straight stitch. And some of you may be going, what do you mean a straight, a zigzag stitch? But you do a really tiny zigzag stitch, like one millimeter wide. And that almost looks like a straight stitch, but it gives it considerably more stretch and is less likely to break under the jumping feet of a toddler. I'm glad you like the butterfly, you guys. Yes, we will have all the threads on our new website, by the way, if you're still here. You're still on with me. I don't know why that... It almost showed up and it went away. Sometimes I think I wear out the computer. So all the threads and all the needles, all the stabilizers are all at creativefeet.com. And I, I know that you feel like you're under the gun to get the coupon. So just buy everything. <laughs> If you buy everything on our website, you'll have everything you need for anything I come up with. I know that was just mean. So I will give you one more really good close-up of this so you can try to match those colors. Maybe the cell phone would be better. Does that help you guys? And then you can freeze frame this on your screen. This will be nice for you to see anyway. See how big the bumps are on the belt on the body? How they protrude up. This is all free motion. And now you can see about how long it takes to do a butterfly that big. But it's never about that, is it? It's about having fun, coloring, being creative. Doesn't it have a nice body? I think it's beautiful. I love doing it. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. As much as I enjoyed bringing this to you today. We're going to end the show. But I'll be back next Thursday. And I would type my website address in here, but I'm going to leave you with a screen. And it'll have all of the information of where to follow me if you're not already following me. The school is called Create with Claire Rowley. And it's built on the Mighty Networks platform. 
there will be a link at the end of this video for you to type in if you just want to read the screen, but it's also already in the description below this video. If you're on YouTube watching, and most of you are, then at the end in the description, there's like a little arrow pointing down. You click on it and it expands and shows you all the links to all the products that you saw in here. And that will help you get to the actual products. And know some people were talking about our new site. Creative Feed is about to move on to a new platform and it will have a different look, but it'll have the same products. And then I'll be adding more because there's lots of stuff that you guys want. You just don't know it yet. So as I do each day or each Thursday, I thank you all so much for joining me, for supporting me all these years and the Creative Feet products. If you didn't catch last week's show, this is actually yesterday. I did a six hour video yesterday. So look for that at my YouTube channel under the live videos playlist or Creative Feet playlist. And you can watch six hours. Because you've only watched three so far. Three and a half. Three and a half. You could go for another six hours and not sleep tonight. Your choice. And I had an ending video. So it didn't stay in here. Bummer. It was going to play music for you and end in a really cool way. But it's not there. This is what the Octopus come with as a kit. For those of you who don't already have them. And you only get the DVD if you choose the DVD version. You don't need it because all of the videos on my YouTube channel. You're spending money you don't need to. You can also use this for artwork. Or what do we call it? Fiber art. That's what it's called. In addition to the embroidery that you saw, and I have videos on this, this is actually a class called Babbling Brook inside of the, the Create with Claire Rowley School. It's a course that you pay for. This is one that I did before, and it's hanging on my wall. At some point, I'll probably give you guys tours of all these things. Or do another class like the Babbling Brook, but do a theme like the ocean as we can do whatever we want. You can also print out or do quilting. You can see how fluid them, the stitches are. That's free motion quilting with the octaves. So once again, thank you guys. I, it was my pleasure to bring you this. I love you all. See you next Thursday. Bye.